Five, four, three, two, one. You're in the right place. Online, on the web, and on air. All over the world. Talk radio. You hear us, we hear you. Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the KTPF, that's Keeping the Paranormal Friendly Community Talk Show, live on air, on the internet, from Manchester, England. Um, Just like to let you know that we've got a few people coming on tonight. We've got, um, well, I say a few, a couple of people coming on tonight. We've got two guests tonight. Our first guest is a young lady called Stephanie Boddy, or or Bodhi, I'll have to find out how she actually pronounced her surname but uh, she she comes from Essex area um, and uh, she's an author of a book that's just come out called The House on Palkney Road and uh, we're going to find out more about the book and um, about herself and what what made her decide to write it. Then later on we have Kerry Cox coming on from the British Paranormal Research Group um, down there in the Midlands somewhere, we'll find out later, and uh, she's talking about the ethics within the paranormal, so uh, could be some controversial stuff coming up there. So, uh, wondering how you've all been today, um, this week, we've not had a bad week, have we Steve? No, not too bad at all actually, makes a change. Yeah, it's been quite quite nice, isn't it? So, uh, you know, but um, as I say, we've got uh, seven viewers, and we've got... Two people in in the chat room at the moment. It is. So yeah, I tell you, you know. what. I tell you what. This this thing's amazing. When you first started, there was a four second delay. Uh huh. Within a couple of minutes, it went to seventeen. Oh well. For, for, everything went dead for a minute, and then it all kept come through. So uh, but, uh, is it all that, right now? that's live stream for you. Yeah, that's live stream. Don't forget, if you do have a problem with live stream at all, just refresh the page. I did notice earlier when we was testing it that it did decide to crash on us the flash player. So please bear with us, and uh, if we lose the uh, if it, if the player does crash or something. We will come back to you as soon as possible. So uh, please remember that it is down to live stream and not us. And uh, we'll uh, see how we go. So um, I hope you've all had a good week, as I said. And um, we've uh, had some interesting uh, observations, haven't we, Steve, that we've been checking out on? We have indeed. I'm just going to just give me a... Uh I actually clean. contacted, if you remember last week, we had um, one of the observations was regarding Affleck's Palace in Manchester. Yes, I have, yes, did you get an answer? I haven't got an answer yet. I don't think anyone's <laughs> going to come up, actually, but uh, never mind. No. So, 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 Shall we just go down there tomorrow? And say, why not? Where's your ghosties? See if we can recognise the lady in the paper photo and uh, it? take it from there. <laughs> you say, where's your ghosties? That's the best way to do it. I believe you're haunted, you know. So, but, uh, yeah. Um, but I hope you've had a good week, as I said. And if you've got anything to tell us, maybe you could come on later on and uh, tell us how your week's been. And uh, So, in the at the moment, in the uh, chat room, we have Minnesota... Paranormal Investigation Group, that's our doc, and uh, I'm assuming Anita's probably listening in the background. And uh-huh. we also have rent a ghost 2873 down there in Norwich, JW. Down in Norfolk. Or as I like to call him, JW. <laughs> 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 and uh, he's down there with um, Vicky listening in, so uh, it should be a good night tonight. Don't forget, if you are listening, why don't you pop into the chat room and join in with the conversations that happen there and um, ask questions when our guest comes on. So, uh, you know, it's all part of getting involved. That's what you're there for. Yes, we can see you there. We just need you to come in and enjoy the show, ask a question, whether it's to our guest, to us, to, or to anybody in the chat room. Mm, uh, so. But, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure one of us will be able to help. When we get to the paranormal events later on, we've got quite a few to go through. So, uh, oh, we better get going, <laughs> then, don't we? <laughs> I just hope and pray that um, there's going to be enough time in between our guests. So uh, there should be. So um, we'll see how that goes. But 
because I say there's I've not seen much happening so far in the paranormal world. There has been a few uh, UFO stuff, and uh, which yeah. I think there's more more UFO sightings than anything else. Alien Bill phoned me up last last week. <laughs> He's had a good time. He's contacted Steve Mera, um, and uh, basically, as far as um, Steve's concerned. He wants to find out more about Alien Bill's encounters, so um, he's going to get in contact with him and send him some stuff over. So uh, he's happy. So and apparently he's doing um, a conference uh, later on in the year up in uh, Morecambe. So um, they're having a UFO conference up there, and amongst other stuff. So yes, you know. he. Uh he kindly rang up to, to thank you for, for, for putting you in contact with Steve. Didn't he? Yes, he said that was a very good contact. So, well, that's what we're here for. That's what it's all about: being friendly. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, not only not only does Steve have the uh, the wherewithal, the wherewithal to uh, actually check out Alien Bill's claims, but he also has the wherewithal to get it out there. Mm, this is it. So, and also one he way, runs one way or another. He also runs his own online. Par- paranormal magazine called uh, Phenomena, so you can find out more about that and download uh, yeah. it yourself at uh, Mapit um, or Mapit. Uh, I'll tell you the uh, give you the actual address for you. Um, it's Mapit, as in M A P I T, and the address is Mapit.kk5.org. So that's www.mapit.kk5.org and um, uh, they actually recommend us, don't they, as well? So, par- keeping the Paranormal Friendly Show, the KTPF. And don't forget, we have got the website as well. Um, you can go into the forum and discuss things there. Um, so, uh, you know, and get involved and introduce yourself and everything. So, that yeah. will be updated over the next coming weeks. Yeah, and uh, also, if you're actually on, you have the, uh, the chat open as well, don't you? Oh, yes, that's correct. So, so people can actually talk yeah. to you direct. This is it. So, uh, so yeah. So why not? Why don't you come and join us sometime and uh, get involved in some of the top topics that uh, are there? We cover everything from UFOs to power, uh, to uh, to ghost hunting, and we've also got cryptozoology. We've even got religions there as well. So uh, you know, and beliefs. So there's quite a few topics there to have a look at, and you can add your own thoughts to it as well. Yeah, please so, do. Okay, and if you want to join the uh, locations database, um, you are more than welcome to do so. But you have to be either the um, the uh, founder of a group or the events manager. Um, we only allow one person in from each group, and uh, they can go there and add their own recommendations and uh, also see what's what locations are in there and it's got how much not exactly how much they are but what price range they come in and who you need to contact and this that and the other and uh, some useful information there for you and there's also a history section as well so uh, you know for anyone who wants to do a bit of history research and stuff like that yeah there's uh, there's also a section on there for people have actually put their uh, investigation results up Yes, so, which is uh, what we want so that we yes. can compare them. If yeah. everyone can c- compare them, that would be great. Yeah, you know, the, it all the, helps everyone. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the idea is it's basically if you put yours up and we put ours up and we've got the same thing. Uh, it, it, it collaborates. Uh, it collaborates there and uh, that's yeah. a, more of a solid finding. Mm. So anyway, Steve, get on to your observations for the week. Observations for the I week. I believe you've got quite a few up there. I have a few. Uh, I'm going to start off with science of consciousness after death. Oh, yeah. Found in rats. In rats? In rats. Okay. Why they use rats? I do not know. <laughs> but uh, new evidence shows uh, the amount of neurological activity that remains for up to 30 seconds, probably longer, uh, high frequency brain activity that's known as gamma waves. Uh, these gamma waves are, are said to affect our perception and self awareness. Uh, this is nothing new, but scientists are now getting closer to figuring out if consciousness does in fact stay awake after death. Mm. Okay, then uh, pareidolia. Pareidolia. Uh, it's a funny name, but a funny phenomenon. Uh, not so funny problem. How many times while surfing the internet have you seen someone post photos 
on a paranormal society's Facebook asking if a face in the enigmatic object is paranormal or not. A face in toast, plaster, smoke, a, a creased t-shirt, trees, foliage and clouds. Uh, the clouds uh, should have given you this away. Remember lying on your back as a child looking up at the clouds and seeing animals? This is the same thing. This phenomenon is called pareidolia matrixing. But is it still matrixing if more than one person sees it without being told? Mm -hmm. Are you still hearing us okay, Steve? I'm hearing myself, yeah. That's okay <laughs> then, because John said he's just lost us. Yeah, I'm, I'm still <laughs> so hearing So hopefully uh, Doc's okay and can still hear us. Yeah, uh, let's hope so. Uh, it's, it's back and forth, okay. Uh, here we go. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, unfortunately, there's very little we can do, but we will uh, carry on regardless, and hopefully you can get back to us. And uh, don't forget, it will be on for you to listen to at a later date. Uh, alien, ancient alien burial mounds found on Google Mars. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, a video posted on YouTube shows a feature on the surface of Mars which looks remarkably similar to ancient burial mounds found on Earth. My question is, how is Google doing this? I don't know. Well, when they do it down here, they ride around the motorbikes. Oh, yeah. How, how are they doing it? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they've even got one that says Google Moon. And uh, our friend John Savage, the doctor, everybody on here, uh, sent us an article that say moon, Google Moon has found what looks like a spaceship on the moon, shaped like an arrowhead, with dots on the back edge that could be lights. And mm. uh, our Susie's going to put that link up there for you to have a look for yourself. Yep, it's there for you now. Okay, here we go. Mysterious unexplained short signals from outside our galaxy. Mm. Now, that, now, these have been happening for a long time. These signals are, are very short and originate from outside our galaxy, uh, the Milky Way. Uh, they are baffling astronomers, and the nature of the objects remains unexplained. Are the signals natural or artificial in origin? Is it possible that extraterrestrial civilizations are sending them, or are we witnessing an unknown astronomical phenomenon? Mm. Did you like that? Astronomical phenomenon. Yes, about the elder. Right. Uh, this one with a little, little bit tongue in cheek here. Uh, PA couple who advertise a slightly haunted home is attracting ghost hunters and curiosity seekers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dunmore, Pennsylvania, this is. Uh, oh, God. I'm so we can't sorry. go. No, we can't go. <laughs> well, we can, but it'd be nice to go America, wouldn't it? Uh, between the mysteriously banging doors, the odd noises coming from the basement, and a persistent feeling that someone is standing behind them, all known as. Gregory and Sandy Leeson are thoroughly creeped out by their 113 year old Victorian home. So, when they put the house up in northeastern Pennsylvania up for sale last month, they advertised it as slightly haunted. Then things really got weird. Mm. There were calls from ghost hunters. Uh, an open house attracted lots of, lots of curiosity seekers, but no legitimate buyers. And a former resident came out of the woodwork to tell the couple. That when he was a kid, he found a human skull in the basement. The same basement uh, whose door Sandy Leeson once barricaded because she wore, sorry, she swore what she could hear clicking of a cigarette lighter emanating from the subterranean depths. Mm. Uh, it's enough to, it was enough to make her husband wonder whether he did the right thing when he playfully wrote about the home's spooky charms. Slightly haunted. Nothing serious though. Says the listing on Zillow's real estate site. It goes on to describe uh, three thirteen a.m. screams and the occasional ghost visage in the bathroom mirror. Uh, the listing attracted local and national media attention. Now the listings just need to find an actual buyer for the four-bedroom home on the market for one hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. Wow. A lot of money. Yes, I don't know if everybody else is getting it, but uh, I'm I'm losing sound every so often. Oh yeah, well, well tell you what we're we'll doing, we, we, which is which is why I'm uh, hesitating a bit. Sh shall yes, we refresh the page? On me. I think we'll refresh. So yeah. if you bear with us for just a couple of minutes, yes, yeah, stay with us, folks. We'll just have a quick refresh, and we should be right back with some more observations. Okay. <laughs> Good. 
Right, let's try this. Okay, we're back. So, uh, ah, that's better. That's a lot better. <laughs> it's very off putting when you're listening to it coming through to make sure you can hear it, and then all of a sudden you get a big blank. <laughs> you go, uh, uh, uh. Hopefully, you can hear us better. And uh, I've noticed that the um, the the uh, delay is quite quicker now. It is. It's uh, it's it's gone short again. Uh, as we say, back to the uh, observations. Bigfoot is wandering Michigan man's property and eating pizza. Yeah. Only in America would Bigfoot eat pizza. Has it got jalapenos on it? Uh, it don't say. It's a run of mill case. Man claims uh, assailant vandalised his estate, requests assistance from uh, law enforcement. Only the accused in this instance is Bigfoot, who, who has allegedly been wandering around the Michigan property for more than a decade, shape-shifting and eating pizza. All right, okay. Yeah. Have you heard about these ones, Doc Savage? <laughs> yeah, that, one, that one was in Michigan. Uh, now, now, something about Bigfoot on a more serious note. Okay. Uh, new laws needed to save Bigfoot's life. Mm -hmm. If uh, a Sasquatch is partly human, is killing one akin to murder? So, should killing Bigfoot be a crime? Although it is in a couple of Washington uh, counties, it's not in, in, the, in the case of Texas, where an eight-foot shaggy beast was supposedly bagged in, in some San Antonio woods by Sasquatch hunter Rick Dyer. Uh, you, you don't need a hunting license to kill something that doesn't exist, said Mike Cox, a spokesman for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, but San Antonio police declined to comment. Dyer, though, has uh, commented plenty after recent release of photos snared attention across the me across the media and the internet. He said he, he nailed Walmart pork ribs to a tree to lure a couple of Sasquatch, one of which, which he shot and killed in September 2012. He promises that uh, scientific proof, including DNA test, autopsy video, will finally be unveiled on February the 9th mm. uh, at a news conference w with a Washington University. The plan is to take the taxidermied body on a national tour. Uh, I'm not giving you a piece of, uh, of bear meat, he says, on, on a YouTube video posted on his Facebook page. I'm giving you the real dead Sasquatch. I have the body and I will show you. Mm. Uh, this belief was one of the first reactions uh, since especially Dyer tried to f force off a, a phony Bigfoot in 2008. Uh, he later recanted, saying that a joke got out of control. Uh, two writers say that the, uh, the stuffed Bigfoot is legit. Uh, but uh, shock and horror was also common, as some saw killing as cruel or worse. If, if you did shoot this animal, then there are complete, and you're a complete moron and a disgrace to humankind, reads the post on Dyer's Facebook page. It's only too bad the Bigfoot didn't shoot you. What's wrong with utilising darts uh, that they use for, for, for tagging grizzlies, uh, reads a comment on the uh, KSAT TV report that released some Dyer photos. Uh, would that require a positive IQ number? Uh, personally, I agree with both of them. Hmm. Uh, this guy... Is a, is a complete moron. Yeah. Uh, and from a purely scientific point of view, uh, th this is a completely different species that uh, may or may not be nearly extinct. Yeah. Uh, uh, if if indeed it is real at all. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about killing something off that a we don't even know anything about. No. Apart from supposed. Uh, footprints and uh, some some hair being snagged along the way because no one's ever found one that's died. No. But uh, this idiot actually shot one. He says he has. He says he has. Yeah. Uh, the pictures, uh, to be honest, the picture looks a bit like Harry and Henderson's. <laughs> Harry and Henderson. <laughs> you, 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 yeah. you remember that one? 
<laughs> but the thing that gets me with this Bigfoot thing, it's been going on for years, hasn't it? It has, yeah. yes. Now, to me, it's, it's cryptozoology, really, right? Something must have mated with another ape-like creature to make a woolly ape. It's a bit like a woolly mammoth story. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is, but yeah. uh, what I'm saying is, yeah, this has been going on for years and things do die out. Yeah. They do, yes. So there must have been, if it's still going on and it is true, then there must have been copulation somewhere to reproduce. Well, at, at the same point, I, I mean, I, I agree with you in a way there, but over, over in, uh, especially places like the States, there are still vast areas of woodland yeah that uh, people don't particularly go that often no so they'd be quite happily living there it, it probably is down to, to cryptozoology and if there is something there then or cryptozilliness as andy 707 calls it welcome to the <laughs> uh, chat room andy i'm glad you took time to come and pop in for a little while yeah welcome Andy. <laughs> but do you know what i'm saying though it's just um it's these things have got to reproduce, and if they're being like it's the same with other cryptozoology yeah. stuff, they've got to reproduce to still be seen or are meant to be seen. Well, X amount of years down well, the line, this guy could uh, by shooting this this animal, and it's not not a word I particularly want to use, especially as we don't know exactly what Bigfoot is. Yeah, uh, it's basically just stopped the breed. Could have just stopped the breeding pair. Yeah, and and if they like penguins, for instance, mate for life. Yeah, that's see, this is it. You know, I mean, he could have just wiped out the wiped out what was left in that area. Yeah, but the thing is, though, you've also got to think about the fact that there's never ever been any, as far as I know, anyone saying that they were attacked by Bigfoot. Oh yes, there is. There's, there's, there's quite a few that have said that they've been. Rocks thrown, big boulders thrown at them, and things like that. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's very few and far between. It, no, it's uh, it is very far and far, few and far between. It, it's also them protecting themselves to an That's extent. Uh, the only good thing about it, if it can be proven, is that like science, like we all say about science, if you, if, you know, unless, unless you find a body, it's it's myth. They don't care. Mm. They've they've now got a body to work on. Yeah. It, if in fact it is because as I say at the end of the day animals anything they don't live that long do you know what I'm saying it's the same with all sorts of things you know um, well well, this thing is obviously humanoid yeah so I, I, I mean for all we know it's uh, when Homie and Sapien went that way Bigfoot went that way but it, yeah uh, and it's uh, like a second cousin so to speak mm, this is it so but uh, no, it's, uh, as I say, the only good thing about it is, if it is actually true, uh, is that they've now got something they, they can definitely say yes, Bigfoot does exist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's a little, little thing for people to think about. Uh, there's a lot of supposed uh, haunted venues uh, and tales of ladies in, of many colours. Mm. Uh, and we white ladies do we have? White ladies, grey ladies. ladies, green ladies, <laughs> even the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know of a blue uh, one. Yep, yeah, uh, bloodstained, bumps and bangs. Uh, uh, but are they haunted at all, mm. or just that we believe it is? Mm -hmm. uh, the mind is is so powerful. Could it be that we are making things happen happen by wanting them to happen? Uh, yeah, that's true. Because we've been told about it. Yeah, we, we're, t we're, t we're told it's haunted. Mm. We go in believing that it's haunted. Yeah. And uh, Andy might probably have a thing on this. It is, it's quite possible. Yeah. But we're actually projecting what we believe into the, onto the building. Yeah. Well, this is it. You know. I, I mean, I mean we, all, we, all, we all know that the brain's a powerful thing, and most mm. of it we know nothing about. See, to my mind, 7 out of 10... You're about to get company. <laughs> oh, God. Seven out of ten um, ghost groups, yeah, paranormal yes. groups, I think, would actually find out about well, a haunting. And it, even though they try and skip over it, it does get registered. It does. It, it registers. Uh, I mean, Andy just said, remember, remember the, uh, the Philip experiment. Uh, for those of you that don't know about the Philip experiment, uh, this group... Uh, Actually made up a ghost. 
All right. They completely made up a ghost. Uh, and by the end of the experiment, they was actually getting paranormal activity from Philip that didn't exist. Wow. <laughs> That, that weren't the Philip that was on that ghost hunt thing, was it? Mind you, that was yeah. that was made up, wasn't it? Yeah. That ghost watch. Yeah, they actually created their own ghost and and it responded. All oh, right. Well, so you actually, I can't think of the word. You project. That's, yeah. You, you, you project from basically. Oh, well, he said no. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> it, it wasn't that. No. Well, when you was on about. No. Uh, so. No, yeah, but I, I, I mean, there is the other thing there that uh, a spirit actually decided to call himself Philip and, and, and follow along with it. Hmm. Uh, really? You're on about Ghost Watch. Yeah. <laughs> it was based on the Enfield Pol Poltergeist. Mm. So, well, this uh, is it. You never know. When it first came out, that was one scary program, though, wasn't it? <laughs> I never saw it until last it, year. Yeah, but when it came out, people weren't told. No, about it. no, so this is it. People were, were Mind panicking. Mind you, it was the same with real. War, if you think about it, it was the same with War of the Worlds originally, right? All of a sudden, they were going to put it on the radio, and Awesome Worlds is giving, like, the um, the forward to it sort of thing. This, that, and the other, there's been an attack or something. Or yeah, other. It, it, and everyone thought it was true. Well, he came in, it came in like a, like a news broadcast, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, and everyone thought it was true. And then they realised that they were talking about... A story. They were telling yeah, a story. Yeah. After after millions of phone calls. <laughs> yeah, you know. So. Well, that is it for me. That's it from you. Well, we've only got a few minutes left before we call our first guest. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who didn't notice that link that Sue put on, that's the uh, the link that Doc Savage sent us about the. Uh, I'll put it on again in case you missed it. Uh, Google Moon. About the Google Moon. Yes. Oh, the Google Moon. So spotting. Mysterious objects, wedge-shaped craft appears lunar surface on the lunar surface. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to play the uh, advert and then we'll uh, contact our next guest or our first guest. See you yeah. in a bit. Yeah, but uh, me like Sue didn't see it until way after it had come out <laughs> on DVD. We we saw it. <laughs> see you in a bit. The Paranormal Intelligence Gathering Services Ghost Store is a one-stop shop for all of your ghost hunting gadgetry needs. Run by ghost hunters for ghost hunters, the shop is filled with all of the latest in investigation equipment shipped in from all around the world, from high quality digital dictaphones to EMF pumps, infrared illuminators to laser grid pens, CCTV equipment to data loggers. All of our equipment has already been imported so you can buy it safe in the knowledge that there will be no hidden costs and with our postage promise you'll never pay more than the actual postage price so visit www.the-pigs.co.uk forward slash ghost store yeah well that was the advert from the pigs and we'll be hearing a little bit more from them a little bit later on because uh there's one or two, i think there's one or two in the um paranormal events if not it's on the website so you might hear it next week right we're going to contact our first guest so please make her welcome and uh, i'm just going to give her a call hopefully the uh signal is okay you'll have to tell us what you can hear as well in the chat room good evening Hiya. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Can you see me now? I can see you, yes. <laughs> I haven't plugged mine in at the moment, but... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think it's in. I'm not sure. Let me just double check. Um, might still be in. Yep, there we go. Uh, good evening, Stephanie. Hello. Can you um, just give us your pronunciation of your surname? Because I don't want to offend you. Is it Body or Bodhi? It, it's, you can, I say Body, but yeah, both. It's, it's kind of however you want to pronounce it, but Bodhi is, is, sounds nicer. It does, Bodhi. Okay, we've got Stephanie Bodhi here. You, now, you're the author of this latest book that's come out, and uh, would you like to tell everyone the title? It's The House on Pulteney Road, um, and it's based on a true ghost story of my family. Right, and uh, first of all, tell us a bit about yourself and where you came up to this you know like why why you was interested in this sort of thing um I've always been a bit of a horror fanatic um from the age of about seven or eight I used to go into the uh 
the video shop and come out with a horror film. Stephen King, I used to read his books when I was young. I'm, I'm not really sure what got me into it, but I have just been obsessed for years and years. Um, and then probably when I got to about the age of nine or ten, I used to sit with my uncle, my uncle Richard, for hours and hours on end. Um, and he, he's in my book, but uh, his name's actually been changed to Robert in the book. Um, and he used to sit for hours telling me the um, ghost stories and yeah. stuff that happened in the house. And that's when I got a real kind of interest in the house and the things that happened to my family. Yeah, so obviously you had to change the, it says in the front of the book um, that you had to change the names, um, but uh, the history, is the history correct and how easy was it to uh, trace the history? Say that again, sorry? Uh, obviously, like you said, you had to change some of the names, which is what yes. it says in the front of the book. Yep. Yeah, so um, obviously the history is correct. How easy was it to trace the history back? Um, well, my family lived in the house from the early um, sort of 19, 19, I think from around 1910, something like that off the top of my head. I can't remember. All the dates are correct in the book. Um, obviously, the, the name of the road, the, the house number has changed for legal reasons because yeah. we don't, don't live there. We don't own it anymore. We didn't want people to be driving up to the house and kind of looking in through the windows. Um Family, obviously, all know that I've written the book. They've all helped me. I've interviewed family members who lived in the house and like visited the house, um, were involved in some of the Ouija boards and seances that took place in the house. Um, as for people who are in the book who took part in the seances and Ouija boards, um, their details have all been changed again for legal reasons. And um, I've got the information from... Um, my family and those who who are now alive, because obviously a lot of the people in the book are, are no longer with us. No, obviously. Now, this isn't your first work, is it? I believe, uh, looking at your website, you've written short stories. I do write short stories, yes. I mean, um, as, in the day, I, I work as a copywriter. I work in marketing. Um, I run a business, my father's business. Um, so I'm not like this. The, I'm not the sort of person who who goes out kind of hunting for ghosts all the time. Although I do love a good ghost hunt. Mm. Uh, and me and my husband, I, my husband doesn't believe in in things like that. He's desperate to, but he he's the kind of guy who he has to see it to believe it. Mm. Um, I mean, the house we live in at the moment. I keep telling him that I'm sure something things here and he see, he's been hearing things and, and stuff like that but he kind of he's one of these people he just pushes it to one side and he'll yeah. kind of believe anything but um something to do with the paranormal um but yeah I try and get him involved and um yeah so so am I right to think you're in Essex somewhere yes I am in Essex <laughs> yeah yeah um we're in we're near Stansted Airport Stansted found that Airport. kind of right. way Okay. Um, now, uh, a lot of UFOs over in Stansted Stansted Airport. <laughs> My husband, he's the one who just told me that actually, because um, he he has got a video. I sh we should send it in to you. He's he's got a short video of what the only thing you can put it down to is a, if some kind of UFO. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really, I, you know, ghosts are my, kind of more my thing and what I've had a lot of experience in. But yeah, I should send this video over to you because it's really um, really interesting. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a look at. So anyway, um, back to the book. Was the paranormal history? Um, you said it was easy enough to find. And excuse me a minute, I'm being cat attacked. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> right. Um, the, you said the, the paranormal history was hard, uh, easy to find out and everything. Uh, yep. Was it all handed down fr through the family and friends, or was there other people? Um, it's all it's all family and friends who I speak to now. I haven't spoken to anybody outside the family. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, talking about um, some of my family who I've spoken to, my grandparents have now passed. Yeah. Um, my granddad he he passed away um, shortly before I was I was born. Um, uh, bear with me one moment. I can hear something a bit strange on the line. I can't yeah. hear you. Oh, okay. Can you hear that? Yeah, I can bear actually. With me. Bear with me. Have you got an open window? <laughs> That's what I'm going to try and find. <laughs> Hang on. You haven't got an open window, have you? Right. Oh. I think we found it, whoever whoever it was. But um. Sorry. What what was I what was I talking about there? 
You were talking about the um, where you actually got it from, you know, family and friends, and you were saying about your grandparents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of the people now have actually passed on my my grandparents. I mean, I would have loved to have got more from from my nan, who was involved and saw pretty much everything that happened. Um, but yeah, it is kind of my uncles who who told me the main kind of bulk of the story, and their their wives, um, my cousins. Um, yeah. So, can you tell us a bit about? the house um what it's all about steve's read some of the you've read some of the book haven't you he's got to the three boys okay <laughs> um but he said he was saying he's just told them in the chat room that it does keep the suspense going definitely you yeah know. That that's what a lot of people said. I mean, um, I, I'd i never seen the house. And I think, as I explained in the first chapter, yeah. I kind of, over the years, have where people have told me the stories, it, I've kind of grown this image in my mind of what the house should look like. Um, so it, years ago, <clears throat> the house actually was up for sale regularly, maybe once or twice a year. It was always up for sale. I have also been told it's been in the paper before. Um, yeah. And... My cousin said to me, the house is up for sale again. And I had said to my husband, Elia, I want to go and um, see the house whilst it's up for sale. So the, the, the first chapter, the way I described the house, how it looks, everything, it actually happened. I, I went there, I looked around it. And much of the house, apparently, when I went home and I kind of re-described it to my parents, a lot of the house had changed. I think I said that in the book as well. The, yeah. the kitchen had been changed. It was made much nicer. Um, so the description of the house is pretty accurate, uh, both in the first chapter and also throughout the, the novel. Um, I kind of drew up plans of what the house was like and kind of stuck to that throughout the novel. I've tried to keep to fact as much as possible but obviously there's a lot of people that I couldn't get information from um, and so that's why certain things in the book have been changed um, and are slightly more fictional. I would have liked to have stuck solely to the truth but for legal reasons you can't do that. No this is it you know. Um, have you ever experienced anything away from the house yourselves? Have I experienced anything? Yeah, or, any, or any of your family that's lived there? Have they oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, when I, at, at the end of the, actually, I won't say anything because I was about to say something about the end of the book, then that's not a good idea. But um, when I was little, um, I'm actually writing a second book at the moment, which is kind of where the first book kind of um, drops off. Yeah. And it's from where I was born. Oh, yeah. And a lot of, when I was little, I used to do a lot of things that could be related to my granddad, um, and I did a lot of freaky stuff um, that I don't want to go into too much because, again, it's in my second book. But yeah. um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a scenario. My um, my nan passed away when I was two years old, and I went to visit the cemetery where my granddad was with my mum. And I was about three, and I said to my mum, Mummy, I'm going to go over and, and uh, play with the children. And before my mum could stop me, I, I ran over to yeah. some graves at the far end of the cemetery. And when my mum and my granddad looked up, my mum said, go on, go, go, go get her, because she didn't want me running off by myself. And um, a lady two graves down went over to my mum, and she said, look at the hairs on my arms. She said, um, they are all stood on end. And she said, where your daughter's over there now? She said, that's the children's cemetery. And when my mum looked up, I was playing Ring a Ring of Roses, but there was no children there. No. Um, so there's, there was a lot of things like that growing up, um, probably until the age of about 11 or 12, um, things, sort of strange things. I, I was known as a bit of a strange child. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then I think I think you're quite susceptible when you're sort of that age yeah. and when you're an early teenager, especially um, female. Mm. Um so, yeah, I, I've experienced a lot, uh, my parents as well, um, yeah. So it sounds to me as though you're a little bit uh, sensitive there, you know, because um, they, they say, you know, if it carries on in later life, you know. Then I think so, I think so. Yeah. I think as well, I mean, I've obviously had a lot of interest and um, – when I was a teenager, I did devil in things that I, I, you know, I shouldn't have done. Um, certain things that have happened in my life, I, I wouldn't speak about again, and I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't make a book out of. No. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, most experiences are, you know, quite pleasant. And at the end of the day, you should just think to yourself, it is, a, it's a good thing knowing that there is something there, yeah. and there is something hopefully after life. So, yeah. um, 
But this is right. it. So in the uh, in, in the book, uh, when you go visit the house and, and you're in the back room upstairs, looking through the window. At, yes. At, at yourself down by the shed of a new little girl. Yep. Uh, looking back on it now. Yep. How does that feel? It feels creepy. It mm. feels creepy. For those of you that uh, haven't read the book, uh, she was looking through the back window and she saw a little girl at the end of the garden by the shed dressed yes. exactly as she was at that age and it wasn't until the little girl actually turned around that she realised she was looking at herself. Do you want to aim, uh, yes. tell us a bit more on that? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, going back there, I think... You, I visualised a lot um, growing up, and you know, you you. I almost set myself in that house. Yeah. I almost, I felt like I lived there with my parents. I felt like I, I had a connection with the house. Um, and you know, like I say, when my husband, when my husband, he wasn't my husband at the time, coming with me, he, he kind of he kind of wanted to deflect off the fact of the reason why I was going there and, you know, what what I wanted to get from the experience. And I, I think, you know, I left and I, I got what I wanted to get. I, I saw what I wanted to see and, yeah, made my way out of there as quick as I could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, was did, there something I Did should... you ever get to the bottom of, uh, of what was actually happening there? No, I left. <laughs> she didn't want to. <laughs> so, um, so obviously, is somebody's living there now? Is there? I don't know about now. Yeah. I know that the house was on the market for quite a long time after, um, and I think it sold maybe about six months later. Yeah. Um, I don't know about now. I don't know about now. Right. As so, far as I'm aware. As far as I'm aware. Was there anything you? Um, felt whilst you was writing the book at all was you know what kind of feelings did you have whilst you was writing I loved writing the book mm. I loved writing it I've I've re retold them stories to friends of mine um for literally years yeah. um I remember at university I'd sit there you know we'd have a few drinks and I'd retell the stories mm. a lot of my friends can you know vouch for the fact they did they didn't want me to tell the stories they um they were frightened by some of the things that I told them. And it was one night when I was on holiday with my husband. I sat there telling him the stories. And I thought to myself, no, I want to put this down into paper. I'm a, I'm a copywriter by heart, so I love writing. Um, and, and that's what I did. I come home and I, I wrote the book and I loved writing it. And every time I needed information or I needed to know feelings of how my uncle or, um, you know, my dad would, was feeling at the time or what, how they think that their father was feeling yeah. or how he acted at the time, I'd pick up the phone and I asked them. So when, when I was going about getting the book published, <clears throat> I obviously, first of all, you, you want to get an, an agent and you, you want to go down the traditional route. But in the end, I wanted it to be like I was telling a story. Yeah. And when you read the book, I didn't want it made into a, you know, really um, commercialized and you know edited to make people die and blood splatter up the walls and stuff like that I wanted it to be real mm. I wanted it to feel as though people were sitting in a room and I was telling them the story and um, I think that's how it's come across yeah yeah so um, when did it actually come out um, it's about three weeks ago so it's, it's not been available that long the um, paperback version has been about two weeks yeah and uh, yeah it's been on Amazon for download for three weeks now right okay and um, is it selling well it is selling very, very well <laughs> yes um, I'm surprised by the sales yeah no I, I think as well a lot of people have an interest in the paranormal and I think particularly when there's a story that is based on on true life um, mm. people want to know what it is they want to know what it's about and it's fantastic I you know I've made a lot of friends through it um, a lot of paranormal um, authors and investigators I've been talking to them and it's, it's, it's really great it's a real community and um, yeah no it, it has been a really great experience um, one thing I want to ask you is, uh, do you think that this labour of love, um, do you think this was just a labour of love or just something you felt you needed to do? I think with this book, I mean, you know, ever since I was a little girl, yeah. it's been a dream of mine to be an author. Um, horror, like I say, I, I love, I love horror, I love paranormal um, and I think it's, 
something I've always thought about but never realised it's something I could do. Mm. With this book, um, The House on Pulteney Road, I hold it very close to my heart. Um, and, you know, you do get, I think in the in the genre, you do get haters and you get do get people who put it down and, you know, tell you you should have done it this way, you should have done it that way. But I've, I've told it how it is. I've yeah. told it. It's a, it's a true story. I'm not going to change things so they sound better. Mm. I'm not going to change things so that, that um, you know, it makes somebody else happy because that's how it is. And I think with this, it is something that needed to be told. I think it, for me, it is something that I, I really wanted. I really felt passionate about. Um, and kind of with the second book that I'm going to write, it's the same kind of thing. It follows on from my family's story. So yeah. it's important to me. Do you feel as though you're, you're getting something off your chest, so to speak? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I suppose so. Yeah. Because like I say, it's something that I've, I've always told the story. People have always been really, really interested. And yeah, it's kind of, it is like a, a breath of release for me. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's told now it's kind of my family are all really you know they're pleased with it it's something that they they have kept hidden for years um mm. and yeah it's kind of it's good for the family now this book was delayed in re being written wasn't it because you started it, it you didn't actually start it last year did you no, I started it in um I think it was 2007 no mm. it wasn't it was 2000 and Nine. It was a long time ago. Anyway, maybe three or four years ago, um, and that was when we went to go and look at the house. And um, then I, my, my husband proposed to me, and we had the wedding to plan, and um, kind of a lot happened in between. And then, yeah, it was this time a year ago that I started my Facebook page, and um, I felt like I needed that bit of encouragement. I needed that bit of a push, and I think the the level of support that I've had on that page has been, you know, phenomenal. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and that is everyone. I, I thank on that page who got me to the end of it and um yeah no brilliant well i must admit you've had facebook um page like you said and you've you've teased us a lot with all yes this, you know i must admit you know and uh in a moment I, I, I would like you to tell us a bit more about the book steve's got another question yeah, for you uh, <coughs> yeah. uh, you said that the uh the, the numbers are obviously not the right number uh is the road the right road or has that been changed as well, just to stop people there may go looking for it? Changed. Yes, the the name the the road name has been changed um, slightly. <laughs> so you don't want it to be another what's that place um, down south where they're, they're always going round? I can't think what it's called now. <laughs> if I if I lived in the house, yeah. I'd tell you exactly where it is, but I don't want to be sued. No, no, <laughs> I understand that. Um, there is a village that uh, Pl Plockley. That's yeah, it. Yeah, Plockley. You don't want it to be another one like that. You say you've been on ghost hunts, have you? I have. Yes. Um, my husband and I. The best one we did. I was asking him what it was called. It was was it was Elliot Cold? What was it? Um, the fort. Coal House Fort. Yeah. Something like that. Is yeah. it? Was it Coal House? In Tilbury. It was yeah. one in Tilbury, and it was um, it was underground, and yeah, absolutely fantastic that one. But there was a lot of activity there. Really, really good. Was that the first one you went on? That was. Uh, well, we've done one. We've done one in Epping in the yeah. forest. Um, we've done one. I used to do my own actually in Epping Forest. Oh right. Go so down there and um, Hangman's Hill and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we've done Epping Forest, we've done um, Highlands House, and yeah, we did the one in Tilbury, which was the best one for us so far. And um, your husband there, how has he felt about these ghost hunts? Is it a case of, how I like to describe it, it's like a roller coaster ride, and you want to go back for more sort of thing? Yeah. Does he, he feel he, that way? He, yeah, I mean, like I say, he is a bit of a skeptic, um, yeah. but he he is looking to believe. He wants to believe. Mm. Um, and you know, when we went to Col it was Coal House Force that that was the one for Coal House Force. Yeah. When we went there, he had an experience. We were doing table tilting, um, tipping, table tipping, and um, all the lights were off, and we were down kind of in this little dungeon thing. And um, I had these headphones on. Mm. Uh, you know, where the one super sensitive ones. Yeah, and. Um, it was all silent and I could hear someone walking around the table and I'm, I'm although I am a strong believer it takes a lot for me I wouldn't make some, something up yeah um, and I wouldn't I don't say things just for the fun of it if I don't think anything's there I'd say you know I don't sense anything there's nothing here but I, I could clearly hear these footsteps going around the table mm. and at about the same time I was I lifted these off my head my husband screamed flinched 
pulled away from me and said, don't do that again. And I said, what? And behind us was an empty kind of dungeon room. Yeah. And um, he said that someone tapped him, like whacked him on the back of the neck. And then he could feel him stroking in his hair. And he thought it was me, but there was no one there. It was pitch black. No one was behind us. So, and, but he still wants more. He yeah. still wants to see more. Yeah. Um, so no, he, he does, he does enjoy it. I think, I think with paranormal ghost hunts and stuff like that, I think they're enjoyable for anybody, whether mm. everyone gets something different out of them, I think. Yeah, I must admit, being a paranormal group ourselves, we do enjoy it. Um, you know, yeah. it, you want more every time. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, orbs become ten a penny, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so They're going back, people. you know, going back to your book. Um, yep. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Can you tell us any, you know, how it's written and whether it's a story that goes through or whether it's individual stories about what happened? Yeah. No. The the book itself. It's. Um, I wanted it to be a ghost story that people enjoyed. I didn't want it to be a retelling where I'd put the date of something that happened and yeah. then kind of make it like a diary. I didn't want it. To, I did think, you know, the different ways that I could do it, whether to do it from first person narrative or third person. But I thought it was better to kind of um, through through the story. I kind of stagger it a bit. I talk in first person in the first chapter about half way through I kind of bring everything back together and at the end I kind of conclude myself so it's it is like I am telling the story yeah. so um it, it goes it, it starts from you know my great great grandparents when they buy the house um and then the early life of my granddad who is the one who was susceptible he is the um he was the seance host and um it, it goes through his life and you know when he met his wife and how she become involved and then he had his children and how they tried they I mean he did try he tried to forget that it was happening he tried to push it away and push it to one side mm. but it was almost like a cry for help it was almost like the spirits wanted him to get involved and um and that's exactly what he did and yeah it's it hasn't got a conclusive ending where it sums everything up and tells you why this has happened and you know what where it's going to go from there because that's not how life is no. uh, you know in in real life there is no big dramatic ending where someone gets murdered and that's the end of it it doesn't happen like that with real ghosts they they are unexplainable and that's exactly how one in my book to be I wanted it to be true I wanted it to be realistic mm. um so that's that's how I wrote it and can you give us um an example of one or two of the stories that's in it give me an example of the book itself like one of the stories uh, that you're in Just give us a teaser <laughs> teaser um for example my my granddad done a Ouija board. Yeah. And actually, sorry, a seance. And he put a radio in the middle of the table. And, you know, sometimes he'd be asking if anything was there. I spoke to my mum and my dad at this, you know, great length. You watch it on TV and people say, oh, if it, is anybody there? And within seconds, the, yeah. the glass starts moving or something happens. It doesn't happen like that. And, mm. you know, my, my mum and dad, they said, you know, sometimes you'd be sitting there for nearly half an hour until something would happen. And sometimes nothing would happen. Mm. Um, but this one time he put a radio in the center of the table. Everyone held hands. Um, and he says, you know, if anyone's there, you know, give us a sign. And the radio started playing and everyone kind of, you know, stopped talking and he stood up and he looked at the radio. It wasn't plugged in. It didn't have no batteries in it. And I remember my uncle telling me the story and he said to me, it played church like music, like choir mm. music that wasn't on any radio station at the time. Yeah. And um, yeah, it kind of stopped when it wanted to stop, but there was no explanation for it. It's just something that, yeah, one of the things that, that happened to him. Now, when did your, again, when did your family start to live there? Say it again? When did your family again start to live there? What what year did it start before it was? It was, it, it was in, it was um, around 19, I, was, I think it was 1903, something like that. It was the early 19, sort of 19th, to, uh, 20th century, sorry. It was very, very yeah. early on. Off the top of my head, I can't think of the year, which is no. really frustrating. me. I'll remember as soon as I get off the uh off the chat from you, but it's, <laughs> did um, you ever, it's very early on. Did you ever feel the need, or did you find out um, when it was actually built and ha what was there before it? 
Yeah, I um I actually um looked into the history of the road. Um and it was the house itself was built in eighteen I think eighteen eighty two, something like that. So um they, they bought it when it was quite new still, probably yeah. about twenty years old. Um and it was built I think I actually put it in my book, it's built um kind of in respect of Colonel Pulteney uh, Murray. Um, who fought in the Egyptian war and the house and they, that's who they named it after the road and um, yeah I think before that they lived then they didn't know of anything that happened I mean before my um, granddad come along my great-grandparents as far as anybody knew mm. um, didn't have any didn't have any experiences it was my granddad who kind of brought it to the house I think and once he brought it to the house it wouldn't leave because my granddad always had the um, theory that he would do seances he would do Ouija boards and he could contact spirits and he contacted spirits that he believed were evil um and they would be like poltergeists um give kind of um a bad presence in the house and he believed that by contacting a good spirit that would overcome the evil spirit and um they would kind of counteract each other out he wanted to be able to help the evil spirits so that they could rest in peace but it doesn't always work like that no no this is it so what um so you say you're writing another book that follows on is that your next project yes yes Yes, that's my next project. Um, I'm working on it as we speak, but currently kind of marketing my other book whilst yeah. writing this book. It's, it's, and I work full time as well, so I'm very busy at the moment. <laughs> well, I normally ask at this juncture, what's next for you? You know, but you've obviously saying it's your book. You know. Yes, yes, and and after that, you know, I'm 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 so into the paranormal and 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 that kind of stuff that I I think I will always be doing something I will always have a project I will yeah. always be writing something so now you've got on the writer's ladder it's it's something that you want to carry on with yeah I mean to be honest like I say it's something I've I've always I've always loved and from a little when I was a little girl I used to write stories horror stories I remember writing a letter to Stephen King when I was about six years old and I just read part of his Pet Cemetery book. Yeah. He never wrote back to me. Um, <laughs> that still that still gets to me. But yeah. I've always loved writing, reading, um, and it's always been in my blood. I think you're either everyone's good at something, and I'm. Um, I've always I I speak better through words written than I do speaking now. Yeah. Um, this interview would be a lot more interesting if I'd written it down. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Don't worry. I said to you, relax. <laughs> All it is is a relaxed show, so you're all right. <laughs> I sell that when the cat went across the screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do this from our front room, you know, and we record it. It goes on YouTube. So, yeah, we're very relaxed here. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so yes, basically. Uh, I, I, it was erected in 1882. Erected in 1882, so, was it? For, for yeah. Colonel Pulteney Murray. That's what he says. So that's the one. That's what she says. So uh, as I say, it's um, a very interesting book. Um, Steve Steve started it. So uh, you know, um, I'll be honest with you. I'm not good at reading. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get into books, to be honest with you. I think I've read about three books in my life. You know. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> and so, I've, but uh, Steve's a, Steve's a reader. He can go through books every. You know, yeah. just. Read for God knows what. I have you? to be interested in the story, though. Otherwise, I can't I get know, into it. I know, but you have got into this, though, haven't you? Reading it off your laptop. I've been, yeah, I've, I think I'm on about page 40 or something. Yeah, <laughs> so what, what did you think to it for, for the first few pages? And, and initially, uh, once, you, once you went back to a uh, great-great-grandfather and that, yeah. I, I, I found it... A slow build-up, but it, but the, you, you get the suspense going because you you were wondering. I was wondering more about his friend actually. About his friend. Yeah. Yeah. So what about his friend? Well, he's. He, I didn't actually. I didn't actually hear <laughs> a word of that. <laughs> he, 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 he was wondering more like about the friend. Yeah, his, uh, his his friend died on his bike. His he got hit by a car. You know the Aaron. friend that got, died on the bike. Harry, yeah. Harry, yes. And he was more wondering about his friend, he said. So yes. It made him but, think more but, about that. But he did. He, oh, okay. Yes, he, that's at the beginning he, of the yeah. book. He did make an appearance when uh, Robert's son under the bed, but uh, I hadn't got any further yes. than that yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know whether he comes back. <laughs> that's and he, exactly. But then, 
That's the bit he's at, is he? Yeah. The high <laughs> seat. So he was more of it, he was thinking more about his friend, he said, you know, at the yeah, time. I think, I think that's the thing with the with my granddad is that he he kind of had no choice but to involve himself in the supernatural. Yeah. Uh, he he they kind of found him. Mm. Um, rather than he, he didn't go looking for it. No. He didn't. Later on in life, he did. But to begin with, you know, he had no choice. And I think that's what the book is about, is that not everybody in life goes looking for, the you know, something to happen or looking for life after death. Sometimes it finds you. And I think that they're the, they're the things that are important. Mm. Mm. Well, I wish you luck with this book. Thank um, you very much. That's out. And where can you get it from again? You can get it on, you can download it from Amazon. Um, you can buy a copy, a paperback copy on Amazon and also on lulu.com. That's a new one, lulu. <laughs> lulu.com. <laughs> and um, when, what I want to say is um, when, when you've written your next book, yeah. will you come on and tell us more about it? And, uh, yeah, tell us what definitely. You're up to? definitely. You know. I'm hoping to be out for Halloween. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> better get your fingers right in it. Right. <laughs> but uh yeah don't don't have anything happen in between will you no, <laughs> no. we don't want to have a gap no. so no rings <laughs> you know but um as i say um uh, i wish you all the best of luck stephanie thank you very um, much thank you for having me that's all right my babe and uh basically what as i said please come back on again and tell us more um of the story and tell us how things are progressing okay yep will do okay right. brilliant Okay, thanks a lot, Steph. Good Thank night. you. Bye. 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 Well, that was Stephanie Body, uh, Bodie, and uh, as I say, um, she's written a book called The House on Pulteney Road. Was it Road? Yes. Or was it Street? I can't remember now. <laughs> Pulteney Road. That was it, yeah. And uh, it's quite an interesting book. And uh, if you want to get it, as she said, it's on Amazon. It's on lulu.com. And... Uh, she was excited about. I think that must have been about her first interview, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, yes, um, uh, I, I, I mean she does. Uh, she does state right, right at the beginning. Mm. Uh, uh, although this book is based on a true story, it's a work of fiction, except in the case of historical fact, and where permission has been granted, any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. The address, yeah. road name, and house number have also been fictionalised. Uh, she says she doesn't want to get sued for putting someone's address out there. No, this is it. Seeing as she's not oh. living there anymore. No. So. But can you imagine the feelings living in a house like that? You know. And I think, I think to a point, we all live in a house like that. Mm, I suppose so, but it depends how much intense it is. Yeah, I mean, I mean on on this particular one. Uh, at the beginning, it uh, it does it, it does get it gets mm. tense because it it's it affects the kids more yeah. than anything else, you know. Yeah. You know, the ghosts are there. Uh, on one one bit I read is when with Robert's first son, the uh, go into the nursery and there's a ghost of a white uh, of a lady in white. Hmm. And his son's just gurgling away like happy. <laughs> but uh, when she actually sees uh, the ghost's face, it's drawn and pale and no eyes. And, and yet the baby's been going, like they do when, you, yeah. when you're pulling faces out. Yeah. So it's it's kind of, when it kind of, it, it's aimed the activity towards the kids to a point yeah at some point yeah there. so uh go out and get it and uh download it and have a read um as i say steve's having a read of it aren't you babe i will but the only problem is i gotta stop now and read the other one <laughs> <laughs> yes he's got to have a look at it because i don't know what it is of late but we're getting a lot of authors but i will i will come back to this one we're getting a lot of horror writing authors on yeah the other one the, for the other lady i can't remember what her name is uh you'll tell me in a minute but uh it hits you right, right at the beginning. Bang! Does it? It does. And the interesting thing is, is that the lady concerned is a police officer. Mm. So her natural instinct is to want evidence and why this is happening and why that's happening, and and yet there's no 
<laughs> there's no way you can look at it that way when them pots are flying out the cupboards. Yeah, yeah, I can't find it at the moment. What her name is, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Don't even know where she sent it to. <laughs> but uh, I know you sent it to me, but, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm sure her name was Carol somebody. But I can't uh, find well, her. You better find it because she's on soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, there she is. Um, I've got to find the book again now, though. Right, okay, let's see what it says That's here. That's probably in the uh, the admin. Um, I can't think. Caroline, her name is. So, she's written a book. But, well, that's a later date. How long have I got? Eh? How long have I got? I don't know, I'll find out. <laughs> I don't even think I've actually put to date with it yet, to be honest with you. Right, okay. But I'll have a look. That gives me a bit of time then. But uh, there you go, Andy. Some uh, mm. place in Essex that's yeah. haunted. <laughs> yeah, that one's in your area. Yeah, that one's called Paranormal Intruder. The, the oh, other is book. It? Yes. Right. Okay. Um, her name is Charlotte. Paranormal Intruder. Yes, Caroline. Hey. <laughs> I think Stephanie's listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, but, uh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but uh, she just answered your question. But anyway, um, back to the rest of the show. What we're going to do now is um, I think we'll go through the, um, let's tell you what's happening in the next month. Yes, events. The have, events. have you got any in Essex? Um, not sure. Because uh, Norse would like to go on one, but she lives in Essex. We'll find out in a minute. We'll find out. I will turn my mic off and away you go. Two seconds. We've got all the news right here. Don't go away. Fed up of wading through the activities and events that other advertisers include? Find just what you're looking for at ParanormalEventsForYou.com, your one-stop paranormal directory. And first up, we have an evening of mediumship. It's not creepy or spooky. It's psychic medium Tony Stockwell, demonstrating his belief that those who have passed can communicate with their loved ones. The popular star of TV Street Psychic, Psychic Private Eyes and Psychic Academy gives proof beyond doubt of the afterlife, all delivered with emotion, sensitivity and empathy. You can see part uh, Tony live on his tour, his 2014 tour, and uh, the next few... Well, that are coming up in a few weeks um, will be in Radlett, if that's correct, Hertfordshire, Darwin Suite Assembly Rooms in Derby and the Kenton Theatre Henley-on-Thames. And for more information, visit Tony's website at www.tonystockwell.com and click events. Now, on the 23rd of January, Blackpool Zoo Ghost Tour will be led by founder of Supernatural Events and Haunted Blackpool author Stephen Mercer. For more information and booking details, visit www.supernaturalevents.co.uk. On the 25th of Jan, Tatton Old Hall, Nutswood. Does Tatton Old Hall have a history of murder, suicide and death? There are certainly many reports of ghost spirits and hauntings. You can find Compass Paranormal .co.uk, they're going there, find out from them. Now, 2014 Enlightenment Tour, Derek Cora's brand new theatre tour, kicked off on January the 14th, and his next date is on the 26th of, uh, 26th of Jan at the Opera House, Buxton. So to find out if Derek is anywhere near you, check his website at derekacora.com. Uh, we're in Leicester now, and Molly O'Grady's uh, on the 31st of Jan and on the 1st of February, there is a ghost overnight ghost hunt with Paranormal Eye UK. And for more information on that and bookings, please check their website at paranormaleyeuk.co.uk. Also at Molly's, there is a psychic supper at, on the 6th of February. Are you looking to connect with your loved ones in spirit? So why not join them for a night of mediumship? All starts at 7 o'clock till 10 at Molly O'Grady's, 14 Hotel Street, City Centre, Leicester. And you can also find out about that on the paranormaleyuk.co.uk. Okay, we're back with Compass. On the 7th of February, they're going to Margham Castle in Port Talbot. Built on the site of an ancient Iron Age settlement, stands the hulking demon 
dominating presence of Margam Castle, a truly magnificent building steeped in history and alive, they say, with paranormal activity, as well as poltergeist phenomena. This is a must for all those who have wished they could investigate a haunted castle, even though it's a faux pas. It is. It's a <laughs> lovely building. Uh, noises, shadows and footsteps have heard regularly at the castle, plus poltergeist activity recorded. This location has been the focus of many successful investigations over recent years. Find out more at compassparanormal.co.uk. They're also going on the 8th of February to Charlton House in London. Uh, built during the reign of James I, Charlton House is the finest and best preserved Jacobean mansion in London. Rich in period detail, the house features original wood panelling, fireplaces and intricate strapwork ceilings. Uh, it's a grade one listed building um, situated in the borough of Greenwich and many staff members refuse to enter the attic room along loan due to the oppressive feelings people describe in there and the sellers have such an atmosphere that you cannot fail to be frightened when down there alone. Find out more from compassparanormal.co.uk There's another psychic night at Molly O'Grady's with paranormalide.co.uk on the 13th of Feb and on the 15th of Feb Victoria House in Bridlington. Victoria House was originally two Victorian houses that have just uh, that have been joined together into a stunning bed and breakfast. The house has, has links to the convicted murderer, um, a suicide, and then there is room 14, the most haunted room in the building, a room in which many will not set foot in. You can find out more about them by contacting from the other side dot org dot uk to book the event. And on the 15th of February, yours truly are off to Museum of Transport. Uh, dating back to 1901, this former electric tam tramney shed is no exception. Uh, <laughs> exception. Ghost stories are often connected to old ruins and houses, but there has been reports of spirits attaching themselves to vehicles too, with many reports of unexplained sightings both on and around these old buses we invite you to join us and the spirits of the past. For more details on this and other events, visit us at UK Shadow Seekers at shadowseekers.co.uk. So check out the One Stop Paranormal Directory for more investigations and events available now. ParanormalEventsForYou.com also offers banner advertising for only £10 per year. See our website for more details. ParanormalEventsForYou.com Your one-stop paranormal directory. Yeah, that's the uh, paranormal news for this week. Quite a lot there, wasn't there, Steve? Yeah, there was indeed. So, but that's, yeah. what, that's what we like. You know, get people get their, uh, get their stuff on there so, so we can get it advertised for them. Yeah, that's what we need. So, uh, as I say... Um, Margam Castle, we've been there, haven't we? Yes, uh, it's an absolutely fabulous building. You, uh, you, as you drive up, you come around the bend and it just opens up in front of you. Yeah. Oh, what a sight. What a greeting, I tell you. It, it, it is unfortunate that, that, that most of it we, you can't actually go in because it's, yeah. uh, they're still putting it back together after the fire in 96. No, and this is it. They've, they've got uh, large parts of it uh, back in and, and able to go in, but... Uh, they're still putting floors and stuff back in. All the roof's done. Mm -hmm. So at least it, it's just the internal stuff to do. So, you know, but as I say, um, not only that, as I say, we're, we're going to the Museum of Transport. And yes. as I said, that it's not all around ruins and houses. Oh, um, there's vehicles. There's been a little boy seen on the bus that uh, was reputed to have been knocked down. And it's one of the Stockport buses. Um, having having said that, most of the bosses in there have had accidents. Yes, they have. Um, and but, there was also a couple of accidents actually in the, the actual tram. In the actual shed itself, yeah. yes. Uh, the other interest, interesting thing was the uh, first time we went, and I left with a big grin on my face. I actually picked up Spitfires. Yes. In in in, in the bush shed, and everybody's looking at me weird. Yeah. And when we actually asked them. Uh, uh, there was Canadian Spitfire pilots who were actually buried in the cemetery across the road. Yes, but, so uh, it's quite they interesting. Have now been, the bodies have now been re repatriated. So. 
So, well, British Paranormal has come into the chat room, so I hope she's ready because I'm going to give her a call soon. And uh, she'll be discussing ethics and uh, within the paranormal. I'm wondering what she's going to talk about, actually. So, uh, what we're going to do is um, she's ready. So, without any further ado, as long as, as long as we keep it friendly, I do, I do, I do. So, uh, I'm going to give her a call right now and get her on the line. Yeah. For us to start discussing what what Kerry has to say for herself. <laughs> I do love it when I do that. The number you required is not registered. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's paranormal. <laughs> Three five four. You got the wrong number. <laughs> there we are. Oh done. I've gone dyslexic in the old age. I went three, four, five instead. <laughs> right, okay. Could you be then get you get some poor stranger then, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, it's done it again. I will get to you. I promise. I will get to you. Yeah, she keeps putting in the wrong number. I'll try again. <laughs> I'm just killing time. Don't mind me. Now, get it right. Third time lucky. Was it third time? <laughs> Was it third time lucky? Oh, hello. It's ringing this time anyway. It's ringing. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hiya. Oh. <laughs> Don't know what happened there. I just couldn't get through to you. <laughs> oh, I can see you dialing. I'm thinking, what's you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Kerry? I'm great. How are you? Not too bad. And uh, as I say, what have you been up to since we last spoke to you? Well, um, we rebranded yeah. um, with, an, with, our, with a group that we were using before. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually split into two groups uh, now. Um, yeah. but some of us have gone off to do the British paranormal side of it. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, it's only really a rebranding exercise rather than anything else. Yeah. Um, it's a, a, a group that we had for a while. The, the others that split away from us decided that they wanted to do something along the more spiritual line. Yeah. And we wanted to stick with researching. Um, uh, you know, so that's what we've done. Yeah. So, as I say, um, it's been a while since we've had you on the phone, um, or on, on the show. So yeah, a couple of months now. Yeah. A couple of months and the rest. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. I think it's been like, nearly a year, at least. It might be. Oh, yeah. God. You know, yeah, so. She was due to come back, but something happened and we yes, couldn't get her on. that's right. We couldn't get you on because uh, I think something happened your end and you couldn't come on. Oh, I remember now. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, we're going to talk about ethics. Yeah. Now, where are we going with this, then, Kerry? Um, I'm, well, I'm going along the lines of... Uh, You've got a paranormal investigation group. I'm just doing this as sort of a, you know, an example. Yeah. You've got a paranormal investigation group, and they hear about um, a haunting that's taken place some years before. Yeah. You know, maybe a hundred years before. Who knows? Um, but they they hear about it in a book, and they're inexperienced, possibly, and they'll go along on a fishing expedition, knock on the door, and say to the people, "Any chance we can investigate your house because it used to be haunted?" Mm. Now, you know, it's something that's on the rise. A lot of venues now are packing in for different reasons. Yeah. Or they're too expensive. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of the teams can't get in. Mm -hmm. So they are looking, to, I've noticed, especially on Facebook, I've noticed they're looking towards other methods. Really? And they are. And, and some groups discuss the fact of how they're going to approach. Some will write a letter maybe to, to you know, a venue or to a, a, a person. Mm. They try and work out who lives there. By yeah. looking on the electoral roll, they'll write to them, or they'll actually just go round, or they'll cold call. Oh, I'm wondering what, how people, how that sits with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, talking to Stephanie earlier, um, she's written a book about one of the places she, you know, her family lived in when she was younger. Yeah. You know, um, and she's had to change the, the names and everything because obviously it's nothing to do with the family anymore. It, it's if anyone was to find out where that was, you know what I mean. And, that's the sort of thing they would do, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I, under, I mean, we have been contacted by people that have been harassed, you know, by groups, and they've said, "Is there any chance that you could come along?" Yeah. Prove that there's nothing here. Yeah. And we've said, "Well, you know, not really. That's not really what we're about. We're no. researching, not necessarily what you know could be there. It's just about finding out either way. But it, it's not a case of nipping in half an hour and saying, no, there's nothing in there.' It's, it's a lot more, you know. Obviously, if you're not experiencing anything, what is the point? 
Yeah. It has proven there's nothing there. Do you see what I'm saying? And the worst thing about it is it gives paranormal a bad name. Yeah, this is it. And I think a lot of groups and individuals, um, and we're not just talking about, you know, we're talking about the whole range of paranormal investigators and practitioners. They are, I think, confusing a little bit uh, what an ethic actually is. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're, they're confusing morality, I think, a little bit, their own morality mm. with ethics. Mm. What they believe and perceive to be moral and what is an ethic. And I think that's a little bit, there's a bit of a fine line yeah. between, you know, what they think. Mm. And also on private investigations, how much information um, are you going to give to your client when you're there? Yeah. You know, do you scare them after death? Or is it. withhold as much information as possible and then collate it afterwards and then try and come up with a way of explaining it that wouldn't be frightening yeah well, yeah, and I've, yeah i've been with groups where they, they maybe have a medium or a sensitive or, or or just somebody that thinks that they you know, they know and they've got no gifts whatsoever and they'll mm-hmm. do maybe a ouija board session or, or whatever and come up with all kinds of things yeah See, the, and they'll people... say it's okay because we've closed it down but you, you don't know that when you've no. gone away when we do private investigations, you know, if somebody's wrong or something, so well, we've got a problem, blah, 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 yeah? Yeah. And we go out to them. We never look at that as an investigation like we would a ghost hunt. No, this you know, is it. Sometimes you do get people that contact you because they want you to come in their house and do the normal ghost hunting stuff and they want to get involved and maybe it's a quick, cheap way of getting a ghost hunt out of it, yeah. you know? Yeah. But you don't go in there and start putting up Ouija boards and stuff like that. We went to one house um, last year sometime and uh, the young girl, she was having problems and, and that relating around, around her little boy. Um, one time when when the kids were in bed, to give you a bit of a, an idea, uh, she was in the living room with her friend and there was a toilet downstairs as well. And for some unknown reason, uh, the friend saw one of the children come down to the toilet and went back up again. And she turned around and said, your daughter's just been down. And uh, she turned around and said, um, no, they're at the, my nans, uh, at the nans tonight. You know what I mean? So whatever it was seemed to be mimicking the children. Yeah? Yeah. Now, a group went round there prior to us. I don't know who they were. Um, and if I did, I wouldn't name them, obviously. But, of course. Um, I didn't know who they were anyway. And she was telling us that um, this medium had turned around and said to her, I can see the chains connecting to you, wasn't it, Steve? Yeah. You know, and I'm like, what the uh, hell? Uh, and, he, and he said, for, for, for £40, I can, yeah, I can and get he them said, removed for you. For £40, I can get them removed for you. Yeah, again. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and that's, where I, that's another, another, another branch of, 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 you know, very unethical behaviour, mm. isn't it, really? Because you get them in a certain situation... Yeah. And then say, well, actually, there's going to be a fee involved with this now, if you want me to help you. Well, this is it. And I think some people are, ter- I mean, some people are terrified, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I don't think, I mean, I don't, you know, I've got a different kind of belief, but if somebody was to say there was something in, in my own home, it would get me thinking. Sure, mm. it definitely would. You know, it just does. It's very personal. It's too close, isn't it? it yeah. Sort of in a way. Yeah. Um, um, Doc in uh, Minnesota, he's just put on, there are two types of investigation. You have the true investigators, oh, sorry, two types of investigators. You have the true investigators who are investigating for the science and understanding, and then you have the para entertainers. They, these are the ones that has no clue on what they are doing. They are doing it for a hobby, for the fun of it, with no care of the science of it. You know what I mean? That's Again, it, it depends on what you define mm. as science. Yeah. Some groups believe they're scientific because yeah. they have all kinds of gadgets. Yeah. That isn't scientific. That's no. technological. Yeah. So that's being technical, a technical team, but that isn't scientific. No. So it depends, again, it just depends what you define yourself as. Mm, this so is it. None of us can really be 100% scientific. No. Because we have no baseline. We've, we've got no comparison. Mm. But every single account of paranormal activity, whatever it is, is different. Yeah. And it's not like, you know... You know, a lot of people have comp- compared it to things like a job that a doctor or dentist would do yeah. in science. But the, the thing, that, something that the doctor would do is, is, is known. It's a known thing that occurs again and again, mm. exactly the same way in different people. The paranormal isn't like that. Everyone experiences things totally differently. And when they explain it back to you, it's never the same as somebody else. 
no. will explain it. So that's where it's a little bit different, I think. Yeah. I don't know whether we could even call ourselves scientific investigators as such. No, like you said, science is different than the tech, so he agrees with you there. Yeah, again, yeah. It's, it, again it's about what you, you know, it, it's to do with your ethics, it's mm. about what you, you, what you believe. I mean, I've looked at a few, before I came on tonight, I looked at a few different groups and what they think are ethics. Yeah. And, it, and a lot of them, it's actually rules. They perceive an ethic as we will not allow anyone to smoke at any of our events. Yeah. Well, that's not an ethic. No. Um, but they would. They might say, um, uh, if we do a private investigation, we will tell tell the client everything and not withhold anything. Yeah. That's not ethical either. No. So there's a lot of contradictions, and it's a bit worrying about do they understand what an ethic is? Mm. And if they don't understand what an ethic is. Isn't it about time they try to understand what an ethic is? And because you know, with there no, being no regulation, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be forced on anybody. But no. a lot of people are, you know, are out there. A lot of groups are out there claiming that they're ethical and they're following codes of morality. They're not. No, they're just not. It's not just giving the paranormal investigators a bad name, but um, it, it, a lot of people are ridiculing it. I mean, for what, at one time it, it, things were getting better, I thought, but then again now. It seems to, you know, there seems to be a bit of hostility. And um, there's hostility between groups because, you know, the, the different groups believe that different groups' ethics, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They're worried about other groups' ethics. The, I'm going to throw something at you and you tell me whether you think this is good or not. Yeah. Um, we did an MBS once and a woman came up to us and said, um, would you come to my house and find out who murdered my brother? Right. Now, this is a recent thing. Now, we said no. Uh, yeah, I would I would have said no. Yeah, so you understand. There are groups out there yeah. that are claiming that they can find certain things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't think that's good. It's very similar to the Moors murders, isn't it? If you think about it, what that group did. Mm mentioning no names, when they went on the moors and claimed that they'd found a spade and claimed that they were going to find a burial site, didn't they, anything like that. She mentioned um, <laughs> You know, they, they, it's never going to happen. That, yeah, that was I was a, trying to be ethical. <laughs> that, was, that, that was definitely not ethical. <laughs> ethical, but then it was, it was out there for it was. a world to see. It wasn't like they were sneaking along and you know, I actually, privately. It was actually around that time that had come out and then the following weekend... I'd gone to the MBS and this woman said, would you do that? And and I said, no, that's not what it's all about. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, that is, you know, I don't know what that is, but it certainly isn't paranormal investigating. For me, yeah. paranormal investigating is when somebody has a problem, mm. they deem to be paranormal and they think they might need help with it. When people call us and say, I took a picture in my lounge and it's got all these orbs on and I'll say, okay, what do you want me to do about it? And they say, well, investigate. Yeah. So I'll say to them, have you had any activity at all? No. Is anything bothering you? No. So I really can't see the point in no. investigating that property because they took a picture of half a dozen orbs. Well, when that you know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. that ethical either. Trying no. to sort of instill it. I, I, I'm sorry, well, I mean, but when I, it comes to orbs... I, I, I've I, seen I pictures like that on, on online and... They swear blind, it's ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. I need a bit more, to be fair, yeah, than obviously. on all posts. They're, ten, they're ten a penny, aren't they? Now? They are. This is it. I mean, I need a, a bit more than that, or say a shadow photo, or, yeah. or an out-of-focus photo. We get a lot of that. Well, this is it. But I need a bit more than that. Yeah. Pick myself up, um, you know, at, at my own cost, to go down there and spend mm. the night there, maybe, or whatever they wanted. Again, I find that, that's not very ethical either, I don't think. No. Encouraging that. Well, um... Going back to that time when that woman well, asked me, well, a question back to me was, "Well, you look, you go into haunted venues. You're doing exactly the same thing, you know." Because no. you I know, mean, if she isn't experiencing a haunting. Yeah, she didn't say that she was, did she? No, no she wasn't. Uh, no, she, she, if she's not experiencing that, then no, you know, she, she for basically a psychic detective. Want, she's yeah. not looking for a paranormal group. No, Steve? she basically wanted us to confirm uh, who she thought killed her brother, killed him. Yeah. And um, um, we're not paranormal detectives. This is it. Yeah. So you're not a detective you know, of any description. You know, we're, it's not really what it's about. And and I'm not really sure and it, and how it, you would have found out. I mean, you know. No. Yeah. I, I, I mean, we could possibly make link with her brother and, and find out from there. But uh, even if we did find out, 
we still couldn't prove anything. Oh, no. No, this is it. No. And, and, and how unethical would it be if you something came to you and you accidentally came out with it? Yeah. You went to the police. Yeah. And it started off a whole chain. No, this is it. You know, so, yeah. I mean, but then, this is what I'm saying. I think a lot of yeah. Doc- individuals are quite quick to make a name for themselves and to try and, mm. you know, try and look. This is uh, it. Something else that I find... I'm thinking about that. Uh, that also I, I, I describe as unethical is when you go along to a ghost hunt, and not necessarily the people that are running the ghost hunt necessarily, but maybe some people that are taking part. Yeah. Um, use unethical behaviour to try and sort of steal the limelight, as if to say, "Well, look at me. I'm suddenly psychic. Yeah. And I'm suddenly <laughs> loads of things that I'm experiencing here, and you know, everyone's looking and thinking, "Oh my goodness." Yeah. And within a couple of weeks, they contact you and say, I went on this ghost hunt, and I think I'm a medium. Yeah. Again, you know, I find that, I don't I don't know what you could do about it. I mean, no. I, there's obviously nothing you can do about it, but there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of people that are interested in it for the wrong reason. Maybe they're interested in it because, I don't know, they're looking for a hobby. Mm. Well, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that, but I, mean, I don't there's think there's they a... should be going into the private investigation side um, and problems. Yeah. Yeah, when there's... really they, you know, they're more sort of suited to just going along to a ghost hunt and having a nice time. Yeah. Steve? Yeah, there's, when the ghost on here, he said there's a, a group that he used to belong to suddenly thought they were experts because he used to watch Most Haunted. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. When, they, yeah. you know, when you say, have you done this kind of thing before? And they'll say, no, but I watched every single live Most Haunted oh, yeah. on the DVD. Yeah. So um, you'll say, okay. Well, do- I'm afraid nothing that exciting is probably not going to happen. <laughs> no. I have to be honest. I don't think we're going to get as much activity as they got in a couple of hours. No, you? this is it. Doc Savage has put on there, there was a group here in the States that would look into last murders um, and find where the victims are laid to rest and do EVPs to see if they can get any info on who murdered them and try to help the police. Even thought it was... Not asked for, even though it was not asked yeah. for. Yeah. Um, if these people that it's these people that are making it hard for us investigators, and plus there is also the legal problem that can follow from accusing yeah. the wrong person. Definitely, you I know, agree with that. This is it. You know, it's yeah. um, you can get yourself in a whole big hornet's nest, can't you? you? Can. It's a minefield if you yeah. think about it. Uh, I mean, we're t- talking there about the different groups with their ethics. We've also got to look at the uh, some of the venues mm. that are deliberately saying that this has happened and that's happened, and and there's no proof for any of it. No, that's it. But that Just, does happen. I mean, there's yeah. even people now that have cottoned on to what you know to the fact that there's a, a massive demand for venues because there are more groups. They're opening their own homes. Yeah. You know, um, I don't personally believe they're doing any harm in opening their own homes, only to themselves, really. Yeah. You know, and their families, and, you know, it, to anyone else that thinks about buying their property later on down the line. Yeah. Well, this is it. The, the mean, consequences of Ouija boards and stuff like that in yeah. somebody's home, yeah. we've got to leave them to yeah. it. We're doing yeah. two, aren't we, in, in people's own homes? Yes. Uh, no Ouija boards allowed. No Ouija boards allowed. And no. don't tell me anything you find. Yes. Uh, in both cases. Yeah. So, but it, it, because it's their own home, it yeah. will be done in a different way. You, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, that's right. Even though it's a public invest, it will be done in in a different way. It won't be, you know, all out trying to, um, you know, antagonise and all this, that and the other lot we, that we do. Which anyway. we don't actually antagonise you know, anyway. But there are people out there that do antagonise, which is another ethical thing, non-ethical. Ethical. Yeah, and it's, it's not just uh, for me. It's not when I've been, you know, on an on investigation with all the groups and I've seen that happen. Ooh. It's not so much the fact that I think they're disrespecting whoever they're contacting because they're probably not contacting anyone at all. Yeah. It's the fact that everyone around is getting that negative vibe and some of them go home with it. Oh, yeah. And then in a few days they might ring you and say, did you feel this negativeness? And I still haven't got it and the shadow's in the bedroom and, and it's opened up a massive mental can of worms. Oh, yeah that person even though i'm quite grounded and you know but there are there are times when something's really gone off someone's thrown themselves on the floor you know and had one of these paranormal seizures or whatever and uh, it does actually get to you a little bit not mm. straight away but in a few days you know yeah. you, god i can't actually believe that happened we've heard a lot of people turn around and say to us oh we had somebody on our investigation within a couple of days they've rung us up and said oh they've bought something back with them and yeah. we sat in the other but that shouldn't be happening, you know. 
there was a time I'll give you another example. There was a time when um we went to Bolling Hall, wasn't it, Steve? And uh, he was uh, yes. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was telling thunder. us um that a group had come in and after the event he saw somebody run upstairs and it he said the only way I could describe it, it looked a bit like Gollum. Yeah, but with a yeah. with um a, a, a cape, a cape and on and hood. Yeah. And he went up there to have a look and there was nobody there and he said, Right, I'm getting out of here. Well, they came back a few months later and um, they said, Oh, sorry to trouble you, but can you tell me, did it did anything happen after we left? And he explained this. Yeah, and they turned around and said, "Oh, that was our fault. Sorry, we picked him up from Hellfire Caves or something, and we we brought him here. We didn't realise, and we've left him here. You know, what are people doing? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the group in question, and once again, I won't name them. Uh, are supposed to be a professional group. Yeah, I, I mean. What they're doing, walking away with something in the first place. I can't hear Steve very well, actually. He said they're supposed to be a professional group. What are they doing with bringing something from another venue in the first place? Yeah. You know. I, mean, I doubt that, you know, I, again, I highly doubt it, but then it almost gives them some kind of glamour mm. to around and say, yeah. you, know, it's that, you know, it's not there anymore. You yeah. brought it with us and it's now sort of wherever you are. Well, this is it, you know. Somebody put here ethics is not pushing your beliefs onto the clients or talking down to them. Again, I, I don't think that that's what an ethic is either. Hmm. Um, you, you know, you, you can push your beliefs onto other people. You oh, know, yeah. religious groups do it. Hmm. I don't think that's unethical. It's just really sort of sharing yeah. enthusiastically what you believe in, well, I think, it. rather than being unethical. Yeah. You know, learning the Bible at school isn't unethical, but it is pushed upon you, isn't it? You're not hmm. given a choice. No. You do religious education and that's that yeah that's what sort of a way to look at it if you like so i don't really think i think that's again where people are getting confused about what ethics actually are ethics are about what is moral and what isn't moral yeah definitely. what is humane and what isn't do you know what i mean are you infringing on someone's rights if you like mm. um and people do have a right to privacy and they oh, yeah. do have a right not to be harassed you yeah. know and be anonymous they have all those rights mm. um i was sort of more touching on Private, really, investigations. Yeah. yeah. Um, public, you know, we do do public venues, but it is entertainment and it, anything does go. Yeah. Try and keep it ethical. Yeah. But it's the nature of the beast that it, you can go along and have some fun. It might not be as ethical as you'd like it to be. No. You know, you get caught up in the moment. Yeah. But more, you know, private and when contacting venues, I mean, a lot of venues are really standoffish mm. because people will call them and say, I went round your venue and this and this happened and my team want to investigate now. And they, they'll, it might be a hotel or, or, or whatever, and they'll say, you know, I don't want this getting out. No. Because, all right, a group might come along and give me £200, but I'm going to lose £20,000 worth of business. Mm. Because people think they're going to encounter an elementary in the toilet because this, this group it. have posted it all over. Yeah. So there's, you know, it, it's quite difficult. And also people compete with stories. So there must be somebody, oh, I saw, I saw this and I saw this and I saw this, and before you know it. Mm. You know, a venue that that had creaky floorboards and it was thought to have footsteps and a few other bits and bobs years ago, suddenly it's the most haunted venue in the UK. Yeah. You know. Well, and again, you know, it, it, I know some venues have been affected. You know, they've been quite seriously affected, haven't they, by the fact that, they, you know, it's, it's now paranormal. I think it doesn't really apply so much to a venue where they're renting it out for public um, investigations because, you know, a lot of them are doing that, hmm. you know, as sort of a sideline. You know, lots of places. Yeah. Um, like, the, you know, most of the ones that you do yourselves. But it's more, you know, the venues that are being fished, I think, that, that where there's an ethical issue yeah. um, at the moment. And obviously the private homes. Because you, you do hear a lot of groups knocking on doors. Yeah. Um, okay. Or they might say, there's a house in this street. You know, I've heard it's haunted. Which one is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they'll do anything. I know there was a house in Lincoln, not too far from where I live. Mm. And we investigated it. Oh, I happened to stumble across um, a post by somebody that was on about getting in there. And the lady that, that pro did live there did move away, and there's another lady in there now. And we, we did actually contact her to say, look, you know, it's a notorious... We investigated it, we found nothing. Mm. All we found is a, a lady that really wanted to move into a four-bedroom house. Yeah. So we just contacted you to let you know that we did a thorough investigation, we didn't find anything. So if there were any rumours... We just want to set your mind at rest. Yes. If you like. Because she was really grateful. Yeah. But 
some of the neighbours keep the story going. Yeah. And she does get a lot of people knocking on the door. She had people in the garden late at night. And she's got two small children. It's not right, is yeah. it? Not really, but the, the press advertised, you know, sort of the press yeah. reported on it. Yeah. In the sun, I think, at one point, and, or the mirror, one of those. It was, in, you know, in the national press. Yeah. And they showed a picture of the house. So it's not that difficult to deduct. No, no, this is not, it. No, Very it's similar different. homes, because it's quite new build. Yeah. So, and, you know, on the estate where she is, it, it actually gives the estate. It, there are not that many new builds there. No. It wouldn't be that difficult by deduction to find it. No, yeah. she's really clever. That's but she's had a lot of a lot of bother, and you know, when we spoke to her, we said, to her, you know, you, you do have the right to to tell everyone to get lost, just because you know somebody reported. I mean, another group claimed that they'd been in there. We'd never heard about that. No. And they said they were from down south, and they said they investigated it several times. Well, we were in there quite a lot, and I, I'd never heard of them, and she'd never mentioned it. Yeah. I think she might have done. She might have said, you know, we've had this other group in. Yeah. With me, but she, you know, she got four children. She didn't want investigators climbing all over that house. She just wanted another house. Mm. And we never found a thing. Nothing whatsoever. Not even the slightest. Mm. Not even a breeze. <laughs> nothing. Steve, Steve. Yeah, I mean, I think the big problem with, with Essex, which is basically knowing right from wrong, uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's people's right definition wrong. of right and wrong are completely different, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. This is it. Yeah, uh, when it goes to sit a set on here, do you think a lot of these people are, are getting the idea from Derek Akura's ghost towns? Yeah. Where we just got in the car and directed the driver and cold called on the house. It, all he's, what he's actually doing is reinforcing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't suppose he's, called, he's cold called homes at all. I don't suppose he would dare he'd be sued. But anyway, um, I'm sure it was all you know, pre arranged. Yeah. Oh, yeah. not surprised, do they, when he goes around there? No, they don't, do they? No, and, you know, they, they're paid. They're generally paid. So yeah. I don't believe a word of it. I mean, most of what is on the TV is entertainment. So you know full well they've got disclaimers and things like that in place for that. Mm. But they're not allowed to talk about it afterwards. No. You rarely hear about a family that's been on one of these shows that has anything to say about it afterwards. Yeah. Because of the disclaimers um, that they it. have to sign, you know, the release, yeah. the release forms. So you can only, I mean, the trouble is the public do think, I think I'll be a ghost investigator this week and I think I'm going to go and knock on a door. Like, I think there was a ghost out when I was a kid because somebody said there was. Yeah. So, you know, it, I think it gets worse when a group, maybe, I mean, let's just say, we're now, we're now called British Paranormal. Imagine if I went to a house and said, oh, hello, I'm the, you know, uh, the manager of British Paranormal and we're doing, we're doing this, this and this and I sound incredibly important mm. because I'm using a particular name, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, it would give the, totally the wrong impression to the person. I'd be oh, quite yeah. intimidated, maybe, by the fact that I'm calling myself a British paranormal investigator, maybe. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways, I think, that where somebody could be sort of pressured. And then, you know, so where do you draw the line? I mean, some investigators wouldn't draw the line, would they? They'd be in there, they need a venue. They go back to their group and say, you're not going to believe this, I've just got in this house and it was haunted and all the rest of it. There was a murder, I don't know. Hmm. Um, you know, look, with, in fact, funnily enough, I read a piece on Facebook um, this morning and it was a group that were discussing going to the woods where the little boy, the little Mikhail, was found at that house. No. And they were discussing um, access to the woods. To even have the notion of going anywhere near yeah. where that boy was. One of their mediums had been having dreams and knew what had happened to him and they'd contacted the police and the police weren't interested because they weren't from the area. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, weren't really interested in it. But they were on about going there to assist the police in their inquiries and I was I was quite shocked and I thought, well, I'll just remember to bring that up. Um, again, how, that isn't, there's not a shred of ethic, you know, there's no ethic there at all. There's nothing. Well, going back to um, what we were speaking about earlier about um, people looking for um, the murderers or, or looking for the bodies and stuff like that. Yeah. There was a particular group that actually felt as though that was their, that was their main aim. That was their yeah. job. That was yeah. their job. They were going to go out and, you know, um, look for these, these children in areas that they've gone missing to try and get a sense of how they died or, or this, that and the other, or, you know, and try and get a sense of what happened to them. And th they felt as though, you know, they feel as though this is their calling. You yeah. know, this is what they need to do. And um, one particular group, the same one as we spoke about earlier, that they actually, when that was it, April that went missing, the little girl. April, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were going on about 
that this, you know, they were going to go and look for her and all this, that and the other. And I actually do remember them yeah. discussing that and a lot of people were disgusted and said, oh yeah, and, and they said, you know, you've got to stay away. You know, they rec- they even reckoned, right, that um, that young lad Needham, was it Needham? Yeah, yeah. Needham. And, and yeah. Needham, yeah. Um, that they sent a message to the website to turn around and say that... Um, well, they supposedly got EVPs, didn't they? That they got EVPs to say that, you know, he was dead. Well, nobody knows he's dead. No. He could have just been kidnapped and, and grown up with another it family. Was, it's always been the, the sort of the consensus oh. that he was taken. Yeah. For the children. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that the police, the, the authorities, always hold things back, always. Yeah. And it's just in case there's another lead. Yeah. But you ne- the public aren't privy to everything that ever happened. No. Not. You know, loads of things going thing. on, loads of things that they know that we're never going to know. I really felt as though when I did that MBS, because we just do it just to uh, let people know what we're about yeah. and we're sat and the other. Yeah. And we do a bit of a talk there, don't we, normally, yeah. to tell people what you know what it's about and what we do. And um, I really felt that weekend that I was trying to prove myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Prove the fact that this is not what we're all about. Yeah, because it, it all been in the papers, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I mean, when it comes to the April, the, the April one, like the young girl in Wales, I actually myself uh, got, for the want of another word, got a feeling where they'd actually find her. But I didn't feel it was my job to, to go tell everybody. No, it might have been just something that you just felt, you know. Intuition, yeah. Yeah, but... Um, you don't tell anyone because you could come back looking like you've got egg on your face and causing a load of prob- problems. Yeah, you know what uh, I mean? from, the ethical, from the ethical point yeah. of view, it's not even looking like you've got egg on your face. It's more mm. what, what is, damage you're doing. Well, this is it. Well, you, could, you, you just could, never know. You could, you could be directing them in the wrong direction. What you know is to yeah. some, something that's gone on. Um, you just don't realise. Well, this yeah. is it. Like Steve said, you could be directing it in a totally wrong direction and ending up wasting time. Yeah. And with the internet now, mm. what something that you say can turn into a massive rumour. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, and, and it escalates and escalates and escalates. And before you know it, people have done things that they haven't really done. Um, you know, and they've murdered people they haven't really murdered. They're involved in murders mm. you know, and all kinds of things. They're, they're all wrapped up in things that never happened. Yeah. I'll give you an example. There was a girl that, and a, and a friend, they were, they went across some railway lines and committed suicide. Can you remember the story? Vaguely. And I read about a team that were staking out the railway line. Yeah. Uh, to contact the girls to find out why they killed themselves because they never left a note. They'd been on suicide websites. They know all of that. and They've been on Facebook. But that's all that was really released. It was, in, put it this way, nationally, not a lot really came of it. But this particular group had been documenting the fact that they were there and they were saying that they had lights going on and off and they were mm. got EVP. It was absolutely horrendous, the things that they were posting. And I only hope that their families of those girls never knew about it. I mean, I think they'd been discussing giving their findings over and it did cause quite a rift in the group because yeah. I think some of the group members said, oh, no, we've gone too far. Yeah. If we're going to contact families, that isn't what we intended to do, is it? We never intended. We intended to research this for our own benefit to see if we could come up with something. Mm. Um, and, it, you know, if we could get a message through, that's what they, it was intended. It wasn't intended to be passed on. No. But suddenly this group took it upon themselves to take charge of any messages that came through and pass them on. Mm. Mm. So, you know, it, it very, it, that's quite dangerous. And it's whether or not, you know, because at the end of the day, we are, you know, looking to investigate paranormal phenomena, aren't we, rather than... Yeah. We're not psychic detectives. We're not no. police. You know, we're no, none of those it. things. It's whether or it's, it's it's just the fact that a lot of people in this field seem to think they've got the right to do certain things because mm. they're calling themselves a paranormal investigator. I think that's the sort of some of it, really. Yeah, yeah. I think they've got rights that they don't have. You know, no, we don't have qualifications. No. We don't have you know anything really. We don't have anything laid out really we've got this experience that we have but it doesn't make us any more than counsellors I don't think mm, and it, it. it doesn't give us rights it doesn't give us rights to paranormal in, you know to access paranormal yeah it really and I think a lot of paranormal investigators think that it does mm. they think that they've got the right to go pretty much anywhere there's paranormal activity because they're calling themselves an investigator it's more probably about that yeah yeah. Um, if you know what I mean, and I don't know where that's come from, whether that is because of the, you know TV shows or or what. I don't know. It's ego, isn't it? It's just egos, isn't it? Yeah. Possibly. I yeah. mean, but you know, was it? Like, I don't remember it being as bad as this before the internet. No. 
you know, I really don't. I don't remember. I mean, I've been in a UF. I was in a UFO group in the late eighties, and I don't remember them being sort of like that. It was all very, you know, report report based. Yeah. And collation yeah. based, and it took months on end, you know, just for a sighting of a couple of lights in the sky. It took months. Mm. months this month of that, months of correspondence. There doesn't seem to be any of that now. It's, oh, it was this, it was that, it was the other. And if a majority says it was something, then that's what it was. Yeah. Or, if you, you know, you might post a picture of what you think you've, you've got. Mm. And then um, there was a good piece today about something on the moon. Y- yeah. yeah. And it turns out it's digitizing. Your camera makes up for um, any, any, you know, um, missing pixels, it will yeah. put something in its place. And it makes you wonder, you know, a lot of people that are zooming in too much, mm-hmm. are they getting the same kind of thing? It never really yeah. occurred to me before. Yeah. Um, and again, you're presenting this as a fact. This is what happened. This is what I saw. I've got it on camera. There's, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. But clearly, nothing, you know, nothing's, it, the camera is lying. Mm. You know, it is like, to some degree, lying. Or oh, we're perceiving it slightly differently to maybe what is really there, the information. We read the information wrong. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, the days where they used to say that the, the camera never lies is gone. Because yeah. Because of the, dig, the because digital. It's digital. It's very it different. Says, it's, an age of being, it's an age of being able to alter things without anyone knowing. Yeah, it fills in the gaps. It does. Yeah. It, it, fills it doesn't in need what to be as obvious do. as one of these iPhone apps. I mean, people think, oh, if it's not an iPhone app, it must be real. But yeah. people have been faking photos. From before, you know, the digital age, to be fair. Mm. They were still managing it with cigarette smoke and all sorts. They found ways. Oh, yeah. You know, and obviously they're doing that now. Um, you know, is that, whether or not that's ethical, I don't know. If you're not hurting anybody. No. If you're just getting a conversation going. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know whether, I mean, I suppose if you were sent one and you said to somebody, you know, definitely a spirit there because I feel it, that's probably not ethical. Um, you know, I think that's probably it? not a good idea. So sort of. basically, when you go in these places, if you're invited, that's not a problem. But to actually go and knock on people's door is not really on. And uh, no, and there's a, there is a lot of it happening. Yeah, we do hear about it. We, you know, we have been invited to go to people's homes where they've had a medium just knock on the door because mm. they've been in the pub and they've heard a story and they thought, oh, I'll just jolly along there and have a word. Yeah, and do a bit, bit, you know, a bit of business. And they'll say, and they'll say, oh. While I'm here now, I can hear two children running around, and I can hear this, that, and the other. And you just think, you know, when they tell you about it, you just think, God, what are the motives? Yeah, yeah. Now, what is the motive? Especially when their medium then turns around and says, I don't mind doing this for free. Yeah. Yeah, you think to yourself, well, what, what in God's name is the motive then? Yeah. They're offering to do it for nothing. What is the motive? This is it. Yeah, we, so. uh, unfortunately, I, I know, I know a, a, a couple of mediums that are a bit like that. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's trying to understand their motives, you know, really. Mm. And there's nothing we can do about it. We can no. just sort of try and pick up the pieces afterwards. Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of it is look at me. Yeah, it's all so look at simple me. as that. Yeah, look what I can do, sort of thing. Yeah, and I think that's the case with a lot of the groups. They want to be quite a large, you know, quite big and quite well known quite quickly. Top dogs. Top dogs, yeah. And I think they, you know, they, they think that, well, let's get up a website, everything's got to be singing and dancing and all kinds of things going on. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with very little thought about what the content is. Yeah. Is and it. then they'll maybe report on where they've been in quite major detail, but not very much detail at all, because it'll be he said, she said, I saw, he saw. Yeah. But, you know, and we researched it when we got home, and, you know, we found that this happened and that happened, so it must be true. Well, they probably researched it before they went then. Mm. You know, so again, I don't find that particularly ethical. I mean, some of the things that we do, we try and recreate what other groups claim. That's if there's enough detail there. What they claim they found, where they found it. So off we go, you know, and we'll try and recreate what they did to see if we can get the same thing at the same time sort of thing. And we, we never have. We've never managed it. Not even close. You know, we just we cannot, can't really imagine. Um, you know, some of the videos that we've seen on YouTube, for instance, we can't actually imagine how they heard anything, because you can hear traffic on the road, that kind of thing, and you're thinking, how did they get what they got then? Yeah. What yeah. were they hearing, that, you know, because, or you, there, there was one place, there was a nightclub next door, and we were, there was this heavy metal band going, and I just remember thinking, how did they get anything mm. on a Saturday night then? Because we can't hear ourselves think. So yeah. how were they hearing footsteps and all the rest of it, when you can't hear a thing? 
you know, so it just it just sort of shows you. Yeah, I mean... They're just saying things for something else better to say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Morecambe Winter Garden's a big one for that. People keep saying they're hearing music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first time we went, uh, me and John, uh, John Roberts, who's, who's no longer with us because he, uh, he emigrated, we were setting up and we, we heard music and we thought, oh, great. But we took the time to look out the window and see a karaoke pub uh, yeah. across the car park. Yeah, when the wind blows. I'm, I've done that myself. I've yeah. been there. Yeah. When, in the theatre area. When the wind blows a certain direction or it changes direction. Yeah. You especially when it's a cold night, we found. Because we went in the winter and it was really cold. Yeah. And then we went again in the summer and we didn't get it. Even though it was noisier outside. Yeah. And obviously it had something to do with, it's to do with the air. Yeah, well, on, on that, on that, <laughs> it was actually the ka- karaoke we could hear singing, you know. Yeah. Well, it is. Yeah. And that, well, look, it depends on which way, again, you know, yeah. lots of conditions as to whether or not you can hear it. This yeah, is but, it. but because of what Most Haunted said they found in that area, they automatically put it down to the dresser singing. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, we were called out to, to uh, investigate. There was an airfield and they kept getting a lot of light in the sky mm. and they thought it was planes coming through the clouds. We went out there and we did it. It was miles from where we live. And it actually is quite high compared to, it's quite near, it's, not, it's sort of near where we live in Lincolnshire, but because it's high, you can see Scobthorpe in the distance. Yeah. And what it was, it was the lasers from outside the the nightclub. They had lasers that went yeah. on the front of the building, yeah. to the sky. And when the lasers were moving around, they actually made it, it because of the position they were, it made it seem that they were a lot further forward than they actually were. Mm. And it was almost above where we were. And it was, in fact, lasers. And you, if you kept watching it, you could now and then just see almost like a sunbeam from a certain area. And it was pretty obvious. You know, it was actually that. But it had baffled people for a long time. We got lots and lots of reports about it. But it took six hours to work it out. Mm. But, mm. you know, it was being reported willy-nilly. And, you know, you know again... It, you know, the, I guess some of the programs that have been on, the David Blaine type programs and and what have you, yeah. and they explain how things are done and how easily we're fooled. Yeah. You know, if I suppose if more people watched it, it would occur to them that some of the things they do aren't ethical. But it depends if they've got a conscience. You know, what you do, you, you do worry about. I think we breed in a generation, aren't we, where we just don't seem to have much of a conscience about what we're saying and doing to each other. Yeah. Really. This is it. As long as we get what we want out of it, whether it be a night of entertainment or an ego boost or, or glory or whatever it might be, mm. as long as we're getting it, you know. No. Is that what it's about? You know, it's, it's difficult to say. But it would be nice if groups did sort of have a bit of a think about ethics. Yeah. What ethics are and whether or not a code of conduct is the way sort of forward for them, you know. It doesn't sort of mean that you can stop doing things how you've been doing them, but it might make, make them think a little bit more before before they do things. Maybe they'd take a different way of doing things. Yeah. Instead of, you know, cold calling, maybe they could inve- you can investigate something without actually going to the venue. Oh, yeah. There's other ways of investigating it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this yeah. is it. So, well, yeah. Kerry, it's been great having you on again. Thank you. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think we'll, we won't leave it as, uh, as long next time. No, don't do that. <laughs> so, you've definitely been a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So, what what's happening with your group now? Um, well, we've been doing an astral protection project. We decided to do some things that we could do from home. Yeah. Um, just while we're sort of quiet and, and, cause a lot of the venues that we were regularly doing mm. finished and it's not doing it anymore. No. So we, we may have to go further afield. Yeah. And that sort of thing. So we thought we'd have a go at doing some, um, projects. So we've been doing an astral projection project, which is, it's strange. It's been giving some really strange results. It's yeah. A, learning how to do it in the first place has took ages. It wasn't an overnight success, no. like they, you know, like you're told it's going to be. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice to even get yourself in that state where you think, um, you know, that you, that something might happen, that you might go somewhere. So yeah, quite different, you know, quite it's a different experience. I have mm. to say, it takes a lot of relaxation, a okay. lot more than. Yeah. I realised, you know, I realised that you do need to be in a, a certain mood. Yeah. Um, you know, and you can't have any distractions and things like that. And it's sort of best when you wake up in the morning to sort of, you know, that sleep state that you get where you go, where you want to nod back off. Mm. That's the best thing, the best sort of time. Yeah. So that's sort of been interesting. But as I say, it, getting to grips, I'm still, even after three months, getting to grips with, you know, a sort of, I, I think they call it ascending when you try and come out of your body. Yeah. 
trying to get grips with that, never mind visiting anybody. <laughs> you know, it's been, and I, I, I know some of the others that have been doing it as well, they've said the same. It takes a hell of a lot of concentration, a lot more, and you, you're worn out. Yeah. Get up in the morning and you're absolutely knackered because you, you, you've put a lot of concentration into trying it. Mm. So that's what we're doing at sort of at the moment. Um, and then obviously, as the weather starts to warm up, we're looking at getting out and they're doing a bit of field work um, and that, you know, trying not to do too many venues. We've overdone our, some of the venues, I think, now. Yeah. Want to stay out of that. Mm. Not going to do very many public events this year. We're going to sort of stay away from that because it's, it's hard work entertaining. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of hard work, you know, involved in that. People need entertainment. You know, they come for the entertainment. So, well, we, you know, we're just going to concentrate is, on not- bonding again, I think. I love to do investigations with the public, but I'm, I can't get involved in the investigation, if you understand what I mean. I do. Because you're talk, too busy looking after them and making sure they're having a good time. Yeah. You don't get the experience either. No, no. You know? And it I might mean, be the only time you're going there, you know. Yeah. And the problem is, if you just have, we've, where we've done before, where we've just invited one or two people along, mm. the costs are being very, you know, quite high. Yeah. Um, to do the venues that you want to do and that other people want to do. Otherwise, you're stuck with a venue that's cheap, but it's cheap for a reason. Yeah. You know, because... But the fact, having said that, you know, there's some groups that are done, overdone. They've done so much. You know, when you go, you feel as if they're still there. Yeah. So the people that were there the night before. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have... So finding fresher venues yeah. where things have been actually reported and not made up getting a bit difficult sort of to do that in our area anyway yeah. without having to travel too far. Yeah. The problem with that is you're very tired. By the time you've got there, it's quite a military operation to yeah. on to a location. This is it. You know, that, that's the thing mm. um, at the moment. There's somebody on about churchyards. I have a thing about churchyards. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. Go on. Everyone's dead in a churchyard. Yeah. They're dead when they've gone in there. No. <laughs> and a lot of people report things from churchyards. Yeah. And I don't think... I mean, someone has said, oh, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people will mistakenly report what they believe is the person in that grave doing the haunting in the graveyard. Yeah. And without thinking, but something a little bit more simple is probably happening, and that is the grief of the relative. Yeah. Impregnating itself on the head. I mean, the headstone's there. You've got all of this going on the ground. You know, all this massive emotion mm. going on at the graveside. And a lot of people never thought of it. No. It's very, if you think about it, it's massively obvious. Oh, yeah. But that's is. probably what they're experiencing, you know, somebody else's grief. Yeah. You know, especially around, the, I mean, they say about the children's grave, that they, oh, it's a child we can feel. I don't, probably not. No. Probably not. It's probably the parents, a relative, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, they're going to, a lot of the, the um, Leaving their energy graves are like it, aren't they, when yeah. they pick things up. I always say the only thing you might find there, to be honest with you, is maybe the vicar, if you like doing the job. Vicar, you know. yeah, people that work in the church. Yeah, sort of thing, you know. Patrons, you know. I mean, a, lot of, a lot of patrons are seen going all yeah. the pathways and, so, and things know. like that. So, yeah, I mean, often when they said there's a murderer in the graveyard and they go and stake it out, <laughs> they're probably uh, not going to get that particular person on the door. I remember my Uncle Joe telling me years ago when he was younger um, that there was, I don't know where the graveyard was, but there was a graveyard where they said that Dracula was lying. Yeah. And as a joke, they they said to him, you know, I bet you couldn't sleep on his grave overnight. You know, it. but it was a, it was a <laughs> urban well, legend that this, this was Dracula's grave. Yeah, you know uh, what I mean? And all he got was the imprint on his back. <laughs> yeah, and all he got was the imprint <laughs> on his back. You know, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's, this is what people's beliefs are, aren't they? Yeah. You know, some people do, well, people do believe that that's where they've left them, you know. They don't realise that their soul's already gone, you know. Some people think their soul's already gone before they're actually buried. Probably. I mean, it probably wouldn't be very exciting for no. uh, somebody haunting, to haunt the grave site. No. You know, when there's loads of people they can try and communicate with that don't, mm. you know, that are dead, that they don't need to go to the grave site. Yeah. You know, they don't really need to be. I mean, a lot of people have felt they, they were, you know, I felt the presence at the graveside. Yeah. Why bother going to the graveside when yeah. they can just be in your home? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. What's the point of that? You're I'll, probably feeling better in your home. A lot of the things you hear and pick up in the graveyard are going to be animals anyway. Yeah, this is it. You can hear this the animals. It. It's going to be, there's all kinds of things going on in yeah. the graveyard, you know. It's like a nature reserve, isn't it, for goodness sake? This is it. So. Yeah, all kinds of things. So, yeah, you know, that's sort of my sort of take on it. Yeah. And I've explained that to people that have come with us. They've been like, oh, I never thought of it like that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, don't feel worried about, you know, when you go to a grave, when when houses are built on graveyards and all the rest of it. Mm. Not an issue for me at all. I don't believe a word of it yeah. at all. 
Okay. Well, thanks again anyway, darling. All right. And um, as I say, don't be a stranger. <laughs> no, no, I'll try not to be. All right. And um, we'll get you back on soon and talk about something else. Okie dokie. Thank you very much. All right. Take care, my love. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, well, that was Kerry. Nice to have her back on the show again and uh, uh, listening to her dog sit tone. She does come up with some really good things, though, I must admit. And, mm-hmm. um, she, you know, she, she's got... She's got her something to say, and, and not, it is actually worth listening to, isn't it, Steve? It is indeed, yes. You know, so good night to Ooh, Kerry. So I was just saying good night. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as I say, um, that's what it's all about. You know, you have got to, whatever you use, whether it be code of conduct, code of ethics, whatever it is, you've got to remember, um, as we have always said, that you've got to be. Res- one thing you've got to do is respect the people, the property, the people that own it and the spirits if you're lucky enough to get anything from them. You know, yeah. that is that is foremost, isn't it, really? You know, yeah. you don't really want to go in there and trash the place, number one. You don't really want to go in there and, and abuse the, the people that own the place and all this, that and the other. And, you know, and you don't want to do the same to, to the actual spirits, you know, whether they are there or not. But most of all, you definitely don't want to be going around knocking on people's doors and asking them if they're haunted. <laughs> oh, God. That's a definite no-no. Especially that, if they... The, the thing is, how many people have moved into a place, you think about it, yeah, and beforehand, all hell was broken loose as far as the residents were concerned, right? Somebody else moves in, they don't feel a thing, not a dicky bird, not a bump or a, yeah. whatever. Yeah, happy as Larry. Happy as Larry. And then you get somebody coming round going, oh, you're haunted. What? Yeah. Then that puts that perceptive into their head. They frighten the bloody life out of themselves. But there are places like that, isn't there? There are yeah. people that have said, I've never felt nothing since I've been here. It was supposed to have been this or whatever. People have actually mm. said that. Now, if, if, well, if, heard people say that. if you're happy yeah. uh, with the place you're in, then you're not going to get it. No. It's uh, you're comfortable. You don't uh, even if you're not open to it. Yeah, you know you're well, not more, open to well, more so if you're not open to yeah. it. Yeah, you know because like we've always said that they're just trying to get your attention for some reason or or to say hello. Or yeah, whatever. I mean it's like I said earlier on them uh, things uh, of observations. Observations. Yeah. Is it is it just us that's projecting this? Well, this is it. Which is similar to what Gary said about the yeah. ghost hunt. Yeah. It, it's actually us humans uh, using parts of our brain that we don't use to use, actually yeah. pr- projecting stuff. This is it. Well, it's time for us to come to the end of the show, I'm afraid. So, uh, just to let you know, she says, oh, where's it gone? It's just feed on me. Lost it. I've lost it. <laughs> Two seconds. Oh. I'll find it in a minute. <laughs> I don't know. Here we go. Coming there soon. Go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on the show, we have um, a young lady on with, on Skype uh, called Michelle Abo. Uh, she's a numerologist, an author, inspirationist, and a radio host. So she'll be coming on the show um, talking to us. And... Um, and uh, we'll be talking to her about numerology and stuff and find out just exactly what it is. So until next week. This is where it's at. You'll find me and Steve in the hub with our guests and hopefully you on the chat room. So uh, until next time, all that's left to say, and definitely after Kerry's words of uh, wisdom on the ethics, keep, keep the, the paranormal, paranormal friendly. friendly. Good night and God bless. Night, everyone. To see in the night, to measure the spike, to see how cold it's been. I buy my kit so I won't forget the ghosties that I have seen. The Paranormal Intelligence Gathering Services Ghost Store. So visit www.the-pigs.co.uk forward slash ghost store.